This is Slam Pigs Podcast. Wednesday night, January the 11th. We are live Sweet. here on the Slam Pigs Podcast. My name is Mike, as always, alongside Travis. Travis, how you doing tonight? Doing pretty good. Thanks for uh, doing this alongside someone. And guess what? It's episode 40. Mike. Number 40. We made it. 40 goddamn episodes. That's right. We're up. Seem like we're, we are approaching the one year mark. I know it's 52, week, one, 52 weeks in a year, but we have not done it every week. We've had some issues in life. People live their lives. We are rapidly approaching one year. What are we, a month away? Something like that. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. good to be back, Michael. Thank you for coming back. We've got a special guest this week, but real quick. Real quick announcement for our Royal Rumble post show. Not only are we going to have Eric A. Martin first thing in the morning. A. Martin Johnson. Now it's official. Logan Myers is coming back. We're going to have a four-man booth. First time ever. So I'm looking forward to our little, a little Rumble. Is he Rumble feeling better? Rumble. He, he is. Did, he get he over is. his heartburn he, or whatever he had? He had some medical issues, but he's doing good. I'll make sure to relay the message to him from you. Uh, Yeast infection or something? Oh, would you be serious already? I can't even plug a goddamn show. Well, nothing's changed in 2017, but... And also, we got to thank guys because our year end award show is quickly becoming one of our most viewed episodes ever. So, shout out to you guys. Thank you so much for everything on Twitter. Real quick, Pretty follow. Sure 100 views. Getting there. Follow me at the Hibiki TMD. Michael, where can everyone follow you at on Twitter? Everybody can always find me at Mike the Slam Pig on Twitter. You can always find us at the Slam Pigs Podcast on Twitter. Also, the Slam Pigs Podcast on Facebook. Not to mention what Travis already said with the Hibiki TMD and his other show, Reset Button. The Reset Button. And thank you guys, the DFPs. This week, though, Michael, our special guest for our 40th episode, Michael, you specifically on last week's episode, you flat out called out the listeners. Call out you, the latest. Be careful what you ask for in life, Michael, because you just might get it. I got and my wish. This week, for the first time ever, first female guest to the show, you got your little wish, Michael. Rashenda, thank you so much for coming on the Slim Picks podcast. How are you? How is everything over there in Okieville, Oklahoma? <laughs> Everything's good. Thank you for having me this week. <laughs> no problem. We got tits. Really? <laughs> what? We made it. We finally got, <laughs> we finally got some tits. All right. Oh, you so calm down. You're, you're making Jerry Lawler seem like a priest right now. Ooh, puppies. <laughs> Sorry, I get excited. <laughs> but yeah, uh, for those that don't know, real quick, Rashenda, where can everyone check you out on Twitter? Uh, at MetalGirl29. And Metal Girl 29. Make sure to check her out on Twitter. She is our first ever female guest. All right. I feel like it, nothing Ooh. better than the 40th episode having a first ever female guest. And also a first time guest on anything Hibiki TMD yeah. related. So yeah. that, that's always a good deal. Well, Roshenda, you did see Raw and SmackDown this week. As you, Michael, let's get right into it. we got a lot to talk about, some news. And it's also our what show, our what prediction show, Michael? This is the Royal Rumble prediction show, folks. <coughs> so get ready. It's coming. But all that aside, it's now time for this week's Raw Review. Monday Night Raw this week, Michael. Live, baby, live. Live, baby, live. Uh, you had a big, two big, re- well, one one return was just to plug his crappy movie that no yeah. one's going to see. Shawn Michaels came okay. back. Why do you, <laughs> really, like, had anybody, had anybody even heard about this movie before he came on? No, Raw? no, I hadn't, and can I just nope. say, this may be the most ridiculous look Shawn Michaels has ever had. It's this, a Jesus movie. It's and a nothing glitter against, vest and nothing, a Chuck Norris Nothing beard. against people that are religious and, you know, those good church-going folk, but really i don't think that's what makes it a bad movie i think what makes it automatically a bad movie is it's a fucking wwe movie like who goes to see wwe movies like i don't i aside from the marine 28 yeah no like no hold on hold on i saw i actually saw the condemned i went to a movie theater to go see the condemned well, that, uh, that movie is actually probably the only one yes. that gets a pass for me that was a good movie yeah that just yeah. because of who's in it and it's how it's. I, I thought that was an okay movie. That was a good movie. So you get a right. you get a pass on that one. I would still watch it today. It was yeah. a good film. But I mean, I, yes. I, I have it actually. Yeah, yeah, I have it. And I did watch Twelve Rounds. I'm not gonna lie with John Cena. How was that? That was actually quick review. That was actually a good movie. So I have I have that movie too. I watched it too. <laughs> you, had, you had you had the Terminator in the in that movie. Well, Rashenda's just proving me wrong all over the place that people do watch these movies. Um. But yeah, I'd, I'd never heard of the movie, but the segment that Shawn Michaels was in, he was just there to promote his movie. Let's just get this one out of the way. It was just big cast. It was a very sloppy segment, It was, to be honest with you. And it was all the over YouTube the place. Version, they edited it out a hell yeah, of a lot. You, so. could tell, you could tell that they were not 
uh, in sync with how they were supposed to be doing things on this segment. You could tell Shawn Michaels was kind of out of place. Um, they didn't know where they were really going with this. I, I, I could tell that this, this was kind of on the fly, and it just didn't go over well with me. It was too all over the place. Even at the end, after everything was over, Shawn Michaels goes for a high five with fucking yeah, Enzo, and Enzo, yeah. Enzo's not even looking at him, so Shawn Michaels just tried to play it off. Yeah. And yeah. my, my favorite part of this whole segment, which was bad, anything with Ginger Mahal, I, I'm just oh. not going to give a chance Ginger? to begin with. Ginger Mahal, sorry. Yeah. Um, was the fact that when Shawn Michaels first plugged his movie and tried to get a pop the crop booed, and like yeah. he was like, "Don't you dare boo me!" I thought that was you hysterical. can't throw me a curveball because I take him and hit him out of the park. Um, yeah. And the crowd was like, yeah. "Resenda, what did you think of this whole HBK little return and plug my movie segment?" Ridiculous. Yeah. It was, right. uh... Well, glad for your detailed opinion on that. Well, you Is this going to be a precursor for the show there, Rotundo? <laughs> hey, we're in for the long haul. It's not it's for Shendo. Okay, it's not okay. No, oh, I'm sorry. no, I, I didn't, was related I didn't to even watch Rotundo. it. Will you be serious? I didn't, I didn't watch the segment. Oh, so the truth comes out. Well, you know what? I don't blame her. I only watch this segment because I do a show. That, there it is. If I no, would not watch no, this I was, No, I'm like, like, when I came in from Dallas, I only caught the very... The very end of the match, when, like, Roman was on there. So you caught the end of the <clears> show? Basically, and then I tried to skim it. I, I basically skimmed the rest of it today and was like, there's nothing exciting to you see know, people you know, over Travis, and over again. I'm getting sick of this. I'm getting sick of you bringing on these these half-assed, lackluster guests. Are you serious? And expecting them to be on a wrestling podcast when they're not even watching the show. She just said she breezed over it on YouTube and she saw She said clips. she saw the last match. But she's seen all the clips, correct? Oh, clips. What does it matter? That gets you through Guess three what? hours. Guess what? She didn't miss shit because Raw, once again, is the same old shit. Uh, how many fucking times are we going to see Roman Reigns, Kevin Owens, and Chris Jericho? Yep. You exactly. know, I do not blame Rashenda. Like I said, the only reason I've watched Raw is because of our fucking little show. Otherwise, SmackDown is the superior show. Now it's our show. fucking little show. It's our fucking little show. Right. That's right. Oh, that's, I love the show. I didn't mean to disregard the show. I'm just saying. That's how fired up Raw gets me lately. And you see it. Once again, we got Seth Romans and Braun fucking Strowman. Seth Romans and Braun Strowman. Seth Rollins. Yeah. I like how, I like see how, how you <laughs> just got me all out of sorts right now. I didn't, he got a few. Show. This show's getting real fired early. up already. I didn't know yeah. what was happening. <laughs> I'm just saying. I do not blame you, Rashenda, for. I mean, I know she probably would have watched it. I mean, she's had some travel issues. I mean, come on now. You know? Yeah. She's supposed to watch it really? live while she's driving. Really? While she's driving, probably. Christ. That's why they invented that DVR, so you can fast forward through the boring stuff. Exactly. Or the Hulu and watch version. The good stuff. like 90 minutes. I'm sick of this laziness. <laughs> yeah, it, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I haven't watched it. I didn't, like, listen to the commentary. You're either a fan or you It still counts. Make up your goddamn mind. What? I am. Uh, she's definitely a fan. You know what she got to do that you didn't and I didn't? She got to go to WrestleMania in Dallas this year, which was a piss poor WrestleMania, but she still got to go. And it, we've never been to one, so that's something. That, and they tried to and portray, those tickets aren't cheap. They tried to portray that there was over 100,000 fans there. I know better. I've watched enough yeah. Cowboy games. There was not 100,000 fans. I mean, fans. they've exaggerated since WrestleMania 3's attendance. That was only really like 78,000. But Rashenda, real quick. I mean, yeah, you went to WrestleMania. How was that real quick? Like, the atmosphere going there live. Oh man, that was uh, that was like a one of those bucket list once in a lifetime experience things. Like yeah, it sure you're is. there and you're witnessing. It. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but seriously, like you know, growing up watching you know WrestleMania and actually attending you know, especially like your very first WrestleMania, it's just like really breathtaking. I know I'm being a girl when I say this, but it's like really breathtaking. No, definitely. Like, like... <laughs> I don't know if we ever said this in 40 episodes. The first ever wrestling WWF thing you and I ever went to as kids was King of the Ring 94 in Baltimore. Yep. yep. And that just blew my mind. I mean, we had really bad seats, but still, it was so badass to be there. Like, and I can remember it so vividly. Like, I've gone to some house shows. We went to a SmackDown show a couple years ago. Yeah, like two years ago. Um, but nothing will ever compare to that one childhood <laughs> experience, that first experience that I had yeah. with you at King of the Ring 94. Yeah, um, and say we were there when Owen Hart won the King of the Ring. Yeah, very King few of, people could say King that. of Hearts. God rest um, his soul. I did go to those roles in Orlando. Remember, I'd go visit Corey yeah. Bagel guy. Yeah. Shout out to Corey. Um, those are cool. <laughs> I was there when the Dudleys put the Brooklyn Brawler through a table in Orlando. I don't know Lee. why I remember that. There for Mike I was Adam there Lee. for the Mike Adam Lee being debuted as the Raw General Manager. Um, that was neat. Not really. That was kind yeah. of one of the worst shows I've ever been to. I got to say, my <laughs> experience. I don't know about you guys. The best shows I've been to. 
are usually the indie shows because they're more interactive. You can meet the guys. There's more to do, it seems like. Well, we did get to talk to Bob Backlund. We did. At For SmackDown. Free. We did. Um, we, we stood there and had a 10-minute conversation with one of the greatest he totally made and longest-reigning world champs of all time. It, it was so surreal. Like, he was charging Bob people. Bob Backlund like, held that title for five years. And Bruno San Martino <laughs> had the uh, seven-year ring. But anyway, we're getting way off topic of Raw this week. Eight. I mean, it's no big deal, Rashida. Whatever you saw, it, like I said, I don't blame. Let's just go over bits and pieces of the Raw, because some of it, I no, don't No, wanna... no, no, She has to tell me, how awesome is Cowboy Stadium? Oh, sorry. It is awesome. Everything is awesome. Yes, I was thinking that Legos, I, I, I didn't want to. But yeah, I mean, other than that HBK stuff, guys, which is a piss poor way to start off a Raw review. I don't even know. I just guess I wanted to get out of the way. Um, I guess the big one coming off this, we have a new entrant in the Royal Rumble match. The Undertaker returned this week. I didn't, I knew maybe he would be putting himself, like, that's why he was coming back, but I wasn't positive. Um, I thought maybe he'd interfere in the Rumble, as I think I predicted last week, to cost... Like uh, Cena against Styles. Did you that notice one. when he announced his entry into the Rumble, they did a little cut segment to who was watching on the monitor? And I'm really yeah, Braun that, Strowman. I'm really hoping that's not what they're setting up for WrestleMania. Yeah. God help us. Well, I, you you've been saying it though. Braun Strowman has looked I, really. I am good. a big Braun but fan with, with Taker though. I, 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 but with somebody like Undertaker, I just don't feel like the match is going to go over very well. I think it's going to be a shit fest if they have that. Um. So, I could see The Undertaker working with AJ Styles. I think that'd be a good match. I do, too. I the phenomenal that. one against the Phenom. I think it kind of speaks for itself. This is supposed to be The Undertaker, once again, it's supposed to be his last WrestleMania. His last hurrah. He's, his last run The now, rumor is he's supposed to go shot. out as the champion. So, it would make <laughs> sense for him to win the Rumble, face AJ Styles, yeah. beat him, and then retire. Yeah. But it's... Well, it's, coming, coming out of this, guys, um, we've all seen it. Do you are you guys coming away positive about this? Or did this get you more hyped for the Rumble? Shenda, I'll start with you. Like, are you amped for the Undertaker now being in the Rumble? Or are you just kind of like, really? He's part time. He's older. Like, you know. <laughs> no, uh, actually, I I don't I don't know how I feel about the Royal Rumble yet. Um, especially because I wasn't expecting him to actually be an in, in entrant in it. I guess that threw me for a curve. I guess that was my curveball right there for all for the night. Yeah. Yeah, I, hmm. I mean, I wasn't expecting that. I figured, I figured they would have just, you know, you know, gave him his pass and was like, "I'm just going to go face this person and be done with it." Well, you got but right, up fact, in, right up in huh? Stephanie's face and says, "I don't answer to anyone." That's right. And shout out to Mick <laughs> Foley. Hey, you know, I blasted the man's. I was worried he about. Must listen to the show. I know he must listen to the show. Last week, I legitimately said, "I'm worried for him. He does not look good." And this week, he cleaned up. He shaved his head and he had color to his face. It's I like, think he's one of our listeners. He's, he's a he's, he's a dark listener. He's a DFP. Yeah, he's a dirty fucking pig. Um, but yeah. Dude, shout have you have y'all guys seen the rumors like on there about him actually might be leaving? Like, from the dirt sheets? Well, yeah, he's not actually under contract. He's on, on a handshake deal with Vince. And I know he needs a hip replacement surgery. We talked about last week. Like, that big fans calling out WWE for not paying for it. Um, and everyone has their opinion. On that. I, yeah, I've heard that rumor. I don't know what's going to happen with that. In my opinion, Foley does need to step away and take care of himself first and foremost, you know. He does. And, yeah, and because, you know, lately, like, you know, with, with all the botches he's been doing and, you know, interfering, like, it, it – I think he rubbed me wrong. Uh, not rubbed me wrong, but I guess he kind of like irritated me <laughs> when he into. <laughs> <when he> into <laughs> <when he interrupted. laughs> anyway, I love having a female guest. I'm goes sure to you totally, do. Goes sure. to a totally different place. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, he bodies. irritated me when he like got involved in that Sammy match when he was going against Braun. That was like it was really good, and I was into it. And then he comes out and just ruins it all, and I'm like, what the hell? Why? Why? And ever since then, it's like, no. I'm they're done. building Sammy up as this big underdog. They're trying to do the Daniel Bryan shit with him. We're, so. we're going to get to that later on our uh, Royal Rumble predictions. <laughs> Definitely got, I've got some uh, well, Dark Horse picks. Got some bold just, predictions. You know, spoil it right there. Yeah. But anyway, Michael, I mean, what do you think coming out of that? Are you hyped for the Taker being another, to, to make the match more exciting? Absolutely. Like, I think it just, I do too. It just I do. adds way more star power. It's not just about. You know, the normal faces that you see all the time. It's not about Brock and Goldberg, because I think we both know that neither one of them are going to win. They're going to wrestle each other at WrestleMania. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and hopefully it's not going to be much longer than their last match, because it'll just go over terribly. Um, but hopefully, I, I'm pretty sure they're going to be building Brock up at some point after the Rumble. 
to make him look a lot stronger than a guy that just got beat in a minute oh, and a half. They're still going Goldberg and Brock. I have no doubt in my mind. Yeah, I'm just hoping that, that Brock will get built up yeah. a little bit more sure than he he's been portrayed. We are, haven't seen him much. I, Go ahead. No, I'd say, are, are you actually Brock fans? Um, no, I, I like Brock more like 2003 when he did a lot more than just the fucking he likes, German he suplex. Likes, he likes young Brock. I like I prefer Brock okay. Young. That sounds really bad. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I like him when he was younger. He liked, Stop saying that, he Travis. Liked him Why do I keep saying that? I, I, he likes him when he's beating the Rock for the title. Um, I am a Brock fan just for the sheer point of the extravaganza with Brock. Um, his in-ring work has definitely become limited at best, but I don't think it's because he can't do the things. I think he's just in it for the payday. I am a fan of Brock in the sense that in this day and age, he still brings a big match feel to his matches. That I'm a fan of. I'm well, not, yeah, because he's a real champion. Him as a person, I think he's, he's a cocky a, piece he's of a, shit. He's a dick. I, yeah, I think yeah. he's a bully. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a bully. Oh, yeah. He's always been a bully his whole life. I mean, you can ask anybody that's ever gone to high school with him, um, been in college with him. He's always been a bully. But, a I mean, if, if you're going to base being a fan of someone based on them being pricks in real life, I mean, where do you start? Shawn yeah. Michaels. Right. So many people. We could go on and on. Randy right. Orton. Randy Orton. <laughs> I've heard stories. Sasha Banks isn't the best yep, person to meet. She's I've a fucking heard. bitch. <laughs> um, no, no, no. I actually I actually went to IHOP after our Raw event, and Randy Orton and, like, a bunch of the – this was, like, Randy Orton back in 2005. We went to IHOP, and he sat right next to us as we were eating, and – how he is on TV is exactly how he is in real life. Kid you not. That does not surprise me. He's a we, prick. You ever see that interview of Randy Orton on like an Israeli TV yes. show where, where they call him fucking brittle? Yeah, he called him fragile or something, yeah. and Randy Orton like threatens to headbutt him. Yeah. Like he walks uh, off set. I'll knock your your teeth out of your mouth or yeah. some shit. Guys, if you've never seen that you, clip, you, I, God you, forbid you I. You put a, God forbid I put a YouTube clip in and then you know get an episode yeah. taken down again. Um, We're not gonna put that in there because we don't need taken off the air. Not sit. That don't even say the name, Sid. Yeah, I agree, though. I'm like, well, I'm completely... Yeah, I'm not going to talk about Sid. I want to move right past it. I'm afraid Undertaker of that name is now. obviously one of the favorites to win it. Um, and we'll get we'll get to predictions later. I think the main reason I'm excited is because Undertaker hasn't done anything except WrestleManias for years, basically. And he hasn't been in the Rumble, I think, since he won in 07. Yeah. And in Texas, I think. That was in San Antonio, too, if I'm correct. It, it was just in an arena in San Antonio. It was him and Shawn Michaels the last two. Yes. So oh. that was the year that, that Shawn Michaels was on a mission to go against John Cena. Do I think this speaks, screams desperation mode a little bit from WWE to get rating? Yes, but well, they I mean, need it. it's business. What do they expect them to do? They want people to watch the Rumble because I, from what I've seen on the rest of the match card, it's nothing that's going to wow you. I you mean, know what I mean? Kevin Owens, Roman Reigns, title match. I, with Jarek, put me in, man. My, put me in the cage. My whole thing with the... With, with the brand split and everything and having a, a pay-per-view like the Royal Rumble is how much can they really fit into this show and it still be watchable. That's always been a thing with Rumble matches because a lot of guys are pulling double duty. I mean, the last time, I mean, the last couple <coughs> Rumbles that we've watched have been lackluster at best. Almost definitely. Well, and, it doesn't help they booked it like complete fucked Watts, like yeah, Daniel Bryan the, getting eliminated out of nowhere. Yeah, the, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. This is supposed to be one of your marquee pay-per-views. Hashtag fucked Watts. Okay, right. I'm glad you got that off your chest. I did. Um, it's supposed to be built as one of your your big four pay per views of the year, and you have booked it the last few years like a roadblock pay per view. You think basically. they're at, do you think they're at the point now where they know that and they're well, looking to redeem it with the star power? I would hope so. That we see now. I would hope so. It's just my only concern, like I said, with the brand split and trying to get all these guys over at once is how much can you fit into this window. I think they're going to, it's going to go off pretty well. Plus, the huge uh, Alamo Dome is going to help it with that atmosphere. Are they actually going to fill it up this time? Because uh, it didn't <laughs> fill up with Shawn Michaels back in the 90s. Well, that was in early 97 when ratings were getting, the, they yeah. were getting their ass kicked by WCW. Like they're, They advertised this 70,000 fan shit and they ended up with, what, like 45? Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, wow. half of them were free. Yeah. So uh, WWE for you, but Michael, uh, as far as Monday Night Raw, I mean, what else really can you say about this week's show? We got a new U.S. champion. I guess yeah. that's the other big news coming out yes. of this. Let's go. Can you can you do it? We Celebrate. have a new your United... wrestler of the year. My wrestler of the year is the, your new United States champion. See this but... coffee? Drink it in, man. Drink it in. Drink it in. But uh, I have very conflicting views on the way this went down. Yeah, me too. I, agree. Um, I already I, know what you're going to say. Why has <laughs> it always got to be when Roman loses, he's got to still look invincible? Yep. 
it's why, couldn't they, why couldn't they just come in, beat the fuck out of him, and be done? And you know what? You know, a lot of people are going to call us out on Twitter, on the comments. You're just splitting hairs with Roman. You're, no, we're not. Look at any other wrestler, how they're booked on any show, except Cena, for God's sakes. Like, it's you're, getting, wrestling, it's re- you're wrestling the WWE Universal Champion, and you're wrestling a former God knows how many time champion, intercontinental champion, yeah. tag champion. People ask me all the time, is Roman Reigns the most protected wrestler in WWE? And oh my like, God, yes. One of them, and you know what the most protected move is, is the bro kick. For some reason, Sheamus' bro kick is so protected. Nobody, If you notice, nobody ever kicks out of that. Like, I don't know. Well, I'm, it, it, anyway. that's, that's a little off topic, know, but my whole thing with, with, with Roman Reigns... It makes no sense to have this match go the way it did because all you've done, even though Roman lost, you still made him look invincible. Because you made Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens look like two fucking lackeys. But see, good. by the fact that that they had to use all these dirty tactics and stuff to beat one person, and there's two of them. You have the <laughs> WWE Universal Champion, who's been the champion for quite a while now, and you have Chris Jericho, who has one of the best pedigrees. Not not talking moves that I'm talking about one of the best pedigrees as far as careers that you can have yeah. in wrestling, and it it takes both of them um, doing dirty tactics to get out of losing for the two of them to beat him. I would have booked this as a total squash. So I would have booked it. Roman Reigns. I, I'll, I'll agree. I'll I'll actually agree with you on that. Roman Reigns gets in there and just gets his ass kicked for ten minutes. Yeah, they enjoy yeah, I'll, I'll agree. I'll, they, yeah, I, they enjoy I agree it. Because... They do it slowly. Yeah. They taunt the crowd the whole time they're doing it. It's time for the heels to get over a little bit here. Yeah. They did, and I don't now, know if WWE can... feels that the heels got over here, but I do not feel that way. Th- those same people I talked about, mm-hmm. Michael, Lynn, would bash us for like splitting hairs on Roman. They'd also be like, "Well, you grew up in the Hulkamania era. You loved Hogan, and you thought that was great." Yeah, Hogan got over like Roman Reigns, but at yeah. some point there was a wrestler like Earthquake who took Hogan out. At some point, heels got he got way. over a little bit. You know what exactly. I mean? This is the first time that it did happen. Once this in a is while. really it just the... seems like Roman. It never happened. Yeah, this is really the first time that you saw Kevin Owens and Jericho go over on Roman Reigns. And it was this way. A lot of people can say Roman's done a lot of jobs. I get that. What? But what jobs? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, do, I don't want to spend. He, he got knocked out by Reigns. Batista in the Rumble. Congratulations. <laughs> for real, that was a while ago. I'm, I'm saying lots he, happened since he lost then. clean to Seth Rollins for the title, who lost the title two seconds later to Dean Ambrose. I mean, it goes back to his drug suspension last summer. It's, it just people thought me. he should have been punished. This match should have been building up these know. two heels because you've done nothing but torn them down over the last two months with Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins, who I'm a big Seth Rollins fan, but I'm sorry. When you have somebody that's not in the title picture in 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 this main event picture and he's always going over over these two guys that are supposed to be running Raw, you have the champion well, he is and his best picture. friend. He's in a title match at the Rumble. Well, I, you he, know. he's, I, he's yeah. now in a title match, but before that he wasn't. <laughs> what is so wrong? I mean, Brock Lesnar just got squashed by Goldberg, who hasn't been seen on television in 12 years. Why can't Roman Reigns get squashed by two full-time guys who are supposed to be your backbone of mm-hmm. Raw? If you listen to the crowd, they are your backbone, especially Jericho. I'm, Jericho comes out, and that crowd goes nuts. I would I would go out on a whim and say 2017 is the year we finally get a Roman heel turn. I think enough is going to be enough this year, and it's just going to have to happen. Rashendo, you said you agreed with Michael. What I mean, what did your whole take on the Roman situation, basically, how he's booked and stuff? Well, well regarding Jericho, the reason I... Jericho had a, like, a, like a fantastic match against AJ... It was clean. Those two, whatever, you know, it was just as is. And then he's had other matches with stars. But when it came to Roman and like, well, well basically what Mike was saying, uh, it took two people to take Roman down where it should have just been, you know, just a clean, a clean match. And it wasn't. Yeah, it always took the club or something with AJ. Yeah. It's never yeah. Roman just gets his ass kicked. It's always Roman yeah. gets beat because of dirty tactics. Yeah. And yeah. because he just. You know, just couldn't overcome the odds. Now, here's a little something you pitched to me. Do you think they're building to a Roman versus Goldberg match at WrestleMania? Because of last week with the double spear and all that. That I I just don't see it happening. I see Roman at WrestleMania <coughs> against, I don't know, maybe Chris Jericho. I could also see him against Seth Rollins if Triple H wasn't in the picture. Yeah. I could see Roman and Seth, maybe Seth Rollins finally going back to his heel ways, um, turning on Roman. 
at maybe the Royal Rumble or something, and then Roman coming in and costing Seth Rollins the Rumble match. Um, but it's already been slated. So many rumors. It's gonna be. It's gonna be Seth Rollins and Triple H. Yeah, it's so. Obvious. Um, it's. I'm still unsure on what they're trying to do with Roman for WrestleMania. I'm really hoping he does not win the Royal Rumble again. I wouldn't <laughs> mind seeing. It. You know, I really wouldn't mind seeing this. And I don't think they're gonna have Roman win the Rumble. I don't think he's in the Rumble. He's not in the Rumble. Well, is he's he? not in the he's Rumble. In the title match. But it's no, he has. Yeah, he hasn't announced it. But that wouldn't be the first time we saw that. Yeah, that's true. Um, um I, I'm not sure on what. Maybe Roman and Braun. I mean, I could see that match. Um, you have those two unbeatable forces going against each other. Um, maybe they use Roman for if they're planning to do an interpromotional match. I would say they Roman, have Roman and Cena. Roman and Cena. That's what I would or, say. Or if they're really trying to book um, and you know, I wouldn't, Smiley Face I re- Belly as nah, much as nah, they're trying to book him. Get that out of here. That thought, fuck Baron Corbin. I would, <laughs> I, honestly, though, I for some reason, I would not mind seeing Roman and Cena simply because of the crowd and how they'd shit on it. And that would be entertainment in itself. In front but of Cena's and because you know the audience that goes to WrestleMania Cena's are diehards. Been, Cena's been getting over a little bit with the fans. That's true, and we've seen this is the yeah, best Cena yeah. we've seen in years. And I think even Cena yeah. would get so much more over than Roman because yes. Roman's so stale. Yeah. He has no personality. Yeah. You could say for Cena's reign of terror, and we'll call it that because that's what yeah. it's been for ten years. In the beginning, at least Cena as a heel was fucking entertaining. And Cena, when the fuck has Roman Reigns opened his mouth exact, been entertaining? Exactly. See, that's why I'm kind of I, I don't see Jesus. that. That's one reason why I don't see it happening because. Cena on a microphone compared to Roman on a microphone is just no. Contest. Do you remember the Tater Tots promo? Yes. Marcus? Do we have to go there? No. God. But it's just <laughs> it's so one sided with one person being way better than the other. It's no contest. I just don't see. I don't see how you Reigns. could build that and make it equal. It's just like they have their. Yeah, that's Ro- great. Roman would be slaughtered. It's bit. You're, you're right. It's business. You have to make a new Cena, but they got their eye on the wrong guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's so mm-hmm. much, and I think maybe they're starting to realize. I mean, that there's rumors bit. of Cena and the Undertaker. There's rumors of Braun and the Undertaker. The Undertaker's going to work with somebody at WrestleMania. It's there's rumors of him against AJ Styles for the belt. Um. Who would, you, who would your eye be on right now if you were like mine would be Rollins. I think right now he is the probably the best complete package they have. I, or Styles. I still think AJ Styles. But is, either one. I, I would take AJ mm-hmm. Styles over Seth Rollins right now just because of the total, experience. Well, the total. I don't want to say package because we don't want to get Lex Luger involved. But <laughs> or offend Rashenda. Yeah. By saying. Yeah. yeah I, I don't want to offend the female on the show. Um, it's weird having a female. Story. Yeah, I know. You almost got to be a little politically correct because you don't want to be sexist about it. But oh come on! Uh, I got it. Fine. Talk in. about AJ Styles' dick, Michael. His man toe. Oh. Yeah, that's what you're referencing. No. No. I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> that's awful. Anyway. Let's let, let's talk himself. about that butt cheek incident. Let's talk about yeah. the blowout in the She wants to talk about his butt cheeks. Where it looked like he farted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not mullet headed butt cheeks, but it's butt cheeks. <laughs> But yeah, but anyway, anyway, I was just curious who, I, you, who your eye If I was going to pick an opponent for The Undertaker, like I said before, it would be AJ Styles. Whether it's for the belt or not, I would pick AJ Styles. And, of course, AJ Styles is going to end up doing the job. But it would make more sense for The Undertaker's last WrestleMania for him to go out as the champ. I think he deserves it. Whether it makes sense or not, I don't Retire care. Retire as champ? Yes. Would you do that? Yes. And just set the belt yes. down? Yes. Set be- the belt down. You set your hat down. You leave it in the ring and you leave. They, uh, they've done that for any you know how year. epic that would be? Yeah, like, that's yes. not, I don't think they've ever done that. Epic. No, they haven't. Yeah. Somebody to retire as champion and just go off into the sunset. Yeah. Well, now, that, now that we've all gotten our little frustrated. What do you think, now, Rashenda? Yeah. I like it. I, I actually I actually think AJ AJ is perfect for the Undertaker to face. I think so, too, just out compared, of the compared, The phenomenal. Yeah, com- phenomenal. compared to, like, Rollins and, yeah. And I could see somebody like Rollins or AJ Styles being able to carry that match with the older Undertaker and make oh, it yeah. entertaining. Yeah. Because as much as we love the Undertaker, he's not the Undertaker from five years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. Could still he, have, you could even say farther. Than yeah. That. that could still have a, a four or five star match. Because that was 2012 Taker when he like he was forklifted yes. out after a match at Triple H or yeah, I, I mean, and <laughs> even that wasn't very good. <laughs> that was awful. His actually. matches with Triple H have always been snooze fest, for, except for the first one that they had. At uh, what was it? WrestleMania, WrestleMania 17. 17. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, no, it was 17. And, uh, no, it was in Texas. Yeah. yeah. 17 wasn't in the Astrodome, was it? Yeah. It was all Austin and the okay, Rock. Okay. Yeah. I'm We're thinking Austin of 19 and Safe Dope. Yep. You're right. Yes. Yeah. Um. But yes, that match was good because they went in the crowd and did all that shit. But and they were both still in the prime of their career. But the Undertaker now, you need somebody like like they had like they had before. 
You know what I mean? It's not like the first time you're going to have him work with a small guy like CM Punk to get him over. But I think Styles would do so much better. And I thought Punk and Taker had a great match, but Styles and Taker would be even I mean, my favorite even this age. My favorite Taker. WrestleMania under, uh, uh, Undertaker match is different from most people. So it's... Snuka? No. The first one? No. I'm just kidding. Randy that Orton. That match is terrible. That's a good match. Him and Randy Orton is my favorite Undertaker that match could, WrestleMania match. It's overlooked all the time. Randy Orton was young and in the prime of his career. And this was 05, so it's when he was a prick to people in yeah, diners. He was a legend too. killer. That was yeah. when the Undertaker was first scheduled to lose the streak. But it didn't happen it didn't because, happen. Of, because I, of Vince. Because of Vince. It's so, always fucking Vince. But I, I, that match, I mean, the last ride into the fucking RKO was insane. Plus you had Cowboy Bob Orton getting yes. in, involved. There was, and... I mean, that match I thought was awesome. That was my favorite Undertaker WrestleMania match. If you haven't seen it, Roshenda, you need to look it up. I got to go with Taker and Shawn Michaels. Under, I mean, well, how can you everybody's that? That's an easy one to pick, the first one. There's a reason why it's easy, though. It's, it's a it's classic. Awesome, it's awesome, but I would still pick Randy Orton because of the different elements to the match. You know what Taker match I really like a lot? Is that Jake Roberts match for some reason? I don't know because it's the first time we really saw Taker as a babyface, and the crowd went ape shit. It wasn't a good match. It wasn't long. No, I just it's a personal it nostalgic Jake's favorite. Jake's last match for yeah. a long time. And he had that naked chick on his tights, and it was yeah. controversial in '92. <laughs> and was, I don't know. You need to look that one up too, Rashenda. It was pretty. It was a pretty. Hey, in '92, a naked chick on your tights is like. Wearing Pornhub scenes on your tights in 2017. Yeah, it's, it's like pretty being, controversial. It's like being that's advertised true. by X videos or something. But I mean, yeah. yeah that's sure. why that, that, that's why Dolph is this generation's HBK. Dolph is this generation's Ron Jeremy. He's like the porn star. He's turning into Val Venus. He looks like a <laughs> porn star. Like Dolph Motley is Crew. this generation's. Yeah, I'll, 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 talk, I'll talk about Dolph when we get to the SmackDown Dolph segment. Dolph is this generation's Razor Ramon. <laughs> anyway, other what? than. What? I don't see that comparison. Why do you say that? No, I don't. I don't see it drug dealer? No, good enough to be Intercontinental Champ, not good enough to be the big champ. Oh, I, okay. Well, he's been the world champ, so yeah, really... it didn't work out very well. That's yeah, like ten years ago. But uh, yeah, that's for all this week, guys. If you can think of anything else, unless you want to talk about Titus O'Neil carrying a keg around, Braun, sorry, I, Seth Broman and and Braun Rollins. Seth and Broman having another no contest, basically double count out. Um, new um, new yeah. U.S. champ. That was cool. It's good. The you know, like I said, I just don't like the way it went about. I thought it should have yeah. been a squash. A Ten minute squash, a slow beating where they enjoyed it, where they got over, so that you could set up that big room and come back this week on Raw, where he just beats the fuck out of both of them. You know what I mean? Whatever it took. But I felt like this was the chance that they had when I saw the the match first. I was like, well, there's no way that Roman if Roman wins this match. I am going to go absolutely ape shit. Yeah. Bananas pissed off. You well, man, I'm y'all, glad didn't, I'm glad no, y'all didn't can see my Twitter feed. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm glad he didn't win, but like I said, I thought it should have never even been competitive. Across the board, guys, this week's Raw, what would you get the final score? C. C? A, A, B, C, D, or F, Rosenda? D. D, ooh, I gotta go with solid D, D plus, C minus. Maybe, maybe it's C minus because the Undertaker, um, and Foley looked better. That's about it. That's about it. That was Raw. That was Raw this week. Let's get right into it, Mike, because we got a lot. We got a prediction show this week. SmackDown Live review. Oh yeah. We were live from New Orleans, the same place. We as- are live. Sorry, you always get to do it. I want to do it once. All right. In a while. All right, you sound a little bit like Luna Vachon. I'm there happy at the to end. have a new guest on. It's, it's well, I'm fun. sorry, you sound a little bit like Luna Vachon there at the end. Sable. You were like live. We are live. <laughs> <laughs> we have Swedish death metal. <laughs> no, go ahead. But anyway, it was from the same place as Raw as usual, which another thing I want to bring up later. Um, you had SmackDown. Um, yeah, Judy Martin White against <laughs> that's the first Carmella. Thing you bring, that's the it first, is. It first really thing is. you want to bring up on The SmackDown. worst women's match maybe I think I've ever seen in a long time <laughs> happen on SmackDown. Carmella versus Judy Martin. Well, well, her name is not Judy Martin. For those, who, <laughs> for those who know who Judy Martin is, she's a legend in the women's industry. Is she a legend? But, well, she's in the Hall of Fame. She's just an old lady. She's in the Hall of Fame. Is she? Yeah. I don't think she's yes, in the Hall she of Fame. Is. No, she's, she's not. Yes. All right. She should be. Don't take not. his word for it, guys. He's probably. But she's she's a legend from the '80s, former champion. Thank God did this woman. Evidently, she made her return this week. Evidently, because my God, it wasn't Judy Martin, folks. It, it might have been her daughter or granddaughter because they were wearing the same nasty outfit, and they had red hair, and they were an awful, awful worker. They could, maybe they've been in the business for six months, 
Because it sure as fuck looks. You know out. what? Maybe we should save this because this is a prime candidate for Slam Pig Cinema. We're gonna. This is going Bobby. to be on Slam Pig Cinema in the future. <laughs> so just so you know, anyway, this is going to be a new cinema. Just throwing that in there about Judy Martin. That was in a, a hot topic for me this week on SmackDown. But Mike, what else happened besides Judy Martin's rebirth Ugh. into the business on SmackDown this week? Well, you had your rematch for the tag team titles. That was your main yes, event you of did. the evening. Great match. American Alpha. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, did you know what makes SmackDown for me? The announcer. The announcer. Mauro Ronaldo. No, I'm talking GBL. about the ring announcer. The ring announcer. Yes, the I love it. The former NXT ring yes, announcer. I yes, I love they it. they brought him up. American Alpha. He's, he's, he's pretty good. Yeah. I love him. Love him. I wish he was on both shows. Yeah, JoJo's got to go go. Like, yeah, that JoJo was needs to go go. That was uh, <laughs> she's awful. She's just terrible. She really is. I don't enjoy it. She sounds like fucking Lillian Garcia, except worse. It's like, hey, we get it. She's a pretty girl, but she doesn't have any talent. Yeah. So. Shame it. Shame it. Yeah. It's awful. Like, God. I'm sick of it. Rashenda, do you agree? As a woman, JoJo's got to go. I actually, to be honest, I really don't pay attention to her ring announcer voice. She doesn't care either way. Just I don't. Right. I'm so tired of these non-elaborate answers. Oh my Can you give me some insight on why you think that? Because every time I hear her, no, because every time I hear her, like, it rips my heart out because, like, Lillian's not there anymore. That's why she needs to go. Are you a big Lillian fan? See, I I was, I I liked Lillian. I wasn't a huge fan. Well, it definitely wasn't a fan of singing. No, I I was because my dad was, like, that was, like, my dad's love. Even though he was, like, married, he was, like, that's that's my girl on the side right there. Is that that (laughs) because she's Spanish? He likes some Garcia. He likes some Lillian. Lillian was a good-looking lady, I'm not going to lie. I thought Lillian was, you know... How her, could you say her she's... Her singing cool? was not very good. I didn't think she was a terrible... Didn't she sing, like, some Divas theme song, and it was... Yeah. Was it Tori Wilson? I don't... I don't know. No, I don't remember who it was, but it wasn't very good. <laughs> anyway. Well, no, I would say... Well, yeah, because, you know, when I started attending WWE events, I was like, I guess... Oh, God, what? 13, 13 14? And she was there, so she, I kind of grew up, I guess, basically, you know... My teen years and growing up, you know, I kind of grew up with her. And I'm like, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, that was her Howard Finkel. See, it's a generation yeah. thing. So, thank God we have the fake. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And shout out to Howard Finkel. We, I don't think we've ever mentioned this, by She's the way. She's the same generation. She just wasn't watching wrestling then. Well, that's true. That's okay. She wasn't watching She wasn't watching it as a child. She started watching it as a teenager. Why is there an awkward silence, Michael? It's not that big of a deal. Well, I mean... <laughs> You know, Howard Finkel's the one. No, the I'm d- <laughs> well, no, no, no. I actually started watching WCW. Oh, look! I was, there you go. I was, she was yeah, watching me, Disco Inferno and WCW. fucking La Parca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking Glacier, weren't you? You were a Glacier fan, weren't you? You were a uh, goddamn yeah. Glacier fan. <laughs> Shout out the Glacier. Fuck. These people, really? fuck. These, these fucking people that you let on this show. You know what? I'm a Glacier fan. So step off. Are you kidding? What's me? wrong with Glacier? You had the car on it. Kick. That shit know. was legit. In the Nintendo 64 game. He's not fucking Sub Zero. That shit knocked you as out. As a gamer in that game. yourself, how could you ever hey, be a Glacier I, character? I, hey, how do we go from American Alpha to Nintendo 64 Glacier finishers on God. WCW Revenge? This is fucked. Let's bring it back. Yeah. So, yeah. Let's bring it back to America. Yeah, but you know knowledge. what? I'm going to test her right now on the match with American Alpha. Not really testing you. I don't know why I said that. Did you see the match with the Wyatts and Alpha, Resenda? Well, what did you think? I did. What did, did I you think? Watch that? Did you find that in your busy schedule? <laughs> you, you weren't traveling. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're a DFT. Yes, I actually I actually watched SmackDown Live. Well, that's I good. watched it. I'm glad you found that in your busy schedule. See, I don't blame her because it's the better show, usually week to week. It is the better show. It like is. for the like ever since TLC, like uh yeah, you, you can tell it's the A plus show than Raw. I think ever since No Mercy, it's been pretty good. Rashenda, what do you do for a living that makes you travel so much? You don't have to answer that, Rashenda. Oh no, I no, I did I just travel because I get bored. Oh. Boom, Shakalaka. What? She gets bored. She's, you, you're boring her. She wants what, to go what somewhere. Do you make a lot of money and you can just go travel for fun? Yeah. Can we get the alpha so match reviewing so, sometime so today, answer, what, what, like, what do you do for a living that makes you make that much money? It's nobody's business. It, it's my business right now. <laughs> Why is it your business? I'll just, I'll just say I work in the medical field. She How works in the medical You field. work in the medical field. So you're mm-hmm. a nurse. She's CNA. Drop it. Are you, are you happy? No, I'm not You got happy. a life 
<laughs> you got a life answer, she does. At least she's not a hooker. Wow. Christ. Oh, God, no, no. I put those days behind me. Just kidding. Times are tough for me. So. Well, you know what? You know, you have to travel sometimes, business. Anyway, can we talk about American Alpha, Michael, and the Wyatts? <laughs> American Alpha going over. No, real quick. Real but quick. I asked Rashenda. Real, real, I didn't ask you your quick, opinion on people, what they do for a we get there. Where are we going? Rashenda, oh, I, I need to test your wrestling knowledge here. No, we don't, Rashenda. Okay. You're, Rashenda. you're scaring her away. Rashenda, stop. where was WrestleMania 10? It's an easy question. Don't you for, give her a hint. For us, it's an easy Don't question. you give her a hint. I'm not uh, just, you know, letting you get your whatever else. Whatever this Where is. was it? <laughs> Don't be looking it up on Baltimore? Google. You're looking it up right now. You have three Maryland? seconds. You're lo- you have three Maryland? Maryland? Where was it? I said Baltimore. No. <laughs> okay. It's in Madison Square Garden. Oh, okay. Easiest building ever to name for a wrestling event. Stop yelling at people. Get her off my show. No. Get her off. No. I want her off. <laughs> no. Get her off. You need to go take a chill. Program. No. Do we need a promo this break to come back so this you can is calm bullshit. down. I want a wrestling fan on this show. We have a wrestling fan on the show. Really? Are you fucking kidding me. Rashenda, I apologize. I'm getting ready to push the button. You're not pushing I'm anybody. I'm pushing it. You're not pushing yep. it. See if I don't push that fucking button. Rashenda, you can tell him to fuck off. Everyone no. else does. No. I think, you her off. I think she hung up. Good. Way to go. Hope she did. She hung up. Well, shit happened. <laughs> no, she's still there. Rescinda, just oh, she's t- laughing. Still here. It's funny? Yeah. Oh, it, it, it's funny. Your lackluster <laughs> knowledge on the subject in which we're talking. I'm the, like, no, just it's the history. I don't like. Why is it a question? WrestleMania 10. It's not like I'm asking. It's, like, it's not like I go to a wrestling show. Hey, wait, hold on. Where was WrestleMania 10 or you can't come in? No, well, that's, who cares? That's the way it should be. It's obscure nerd knowledge. I didn't ask her where WrestleMania 22 was. Like a, a run-of-the-mill WrestleMania. <laughs> I, asked her, I asked her WrestleMania 10. We are, we're nerds. There's difference. There's difference. You can't blame yeah, someone I'm for not, not being Yeah, I'm nerd. not a wrestling nerd. That's there like one know. of the things I don't specialize that's you, in. That's you, Buster wrestling. Brown. You see what you did when you came to town? You, put a, you had a face, you put a frown. You made her night, and then it's down. Stop it. I gotta change the subject done, somehow, you, so I'm just gonna rhyme on the spot. Are you down R Truth Jr.? I like R Truth. I you? think he's underutilized. You do? That's Who? besides what? the point. You hear that? Yeah, what? I, I think he'd be a great color commentator. Why not? Fuck it. Anyway. Anyway, can we get back to this goddamn American Alpha versus Wyatt? <laughs> Sick of this bullshit. Well, you're you bringing be... on these people that have never been speed on the show. Maybe you should. Maybe you need to go get. I've already done hey, enough with fucking be, league no, slash You should face. be happy you have a chick on. Exactly. Be happy people want to come oh, on the show. And if you keep this up, they're always going to want to come just on. Just because you have a vagina, come I should on. be happy you're on the show, huh? I have boobs too. Okay. Boobs. She's that. got boobs. We all have boobs. All right. I, but I think what? mine are a little bit bigger you than yours, though. You know what, Michael? Oh, I would hope so, or that would make me ridiculously fat. Here we go. American <laughs> Alpha, I like this match. I like the end. I like the, I like that they're teasing. I think Orton is super over. Since no one else wants to take it, Michael, I'm going to try to move the show along. Are you good? Let's talk about Luke Harper and get your mind off things. Why would I want to talk about Luke Harper? Why not? Ever. I think he is one of the most underutilized guys, too, in the company. I think he's got Bruiser Brody heel written all over him. I think he could be a big deal with book properly. He could be a big deal if we get past that and bold spot. And you know spot. what? I like... <laughs> did you like Can Randy? you get past that bold spot I got, in his head? I got past it with Randy Savage. You did, too. So no, why not Luke Harper? Uh, this is in the 80s. Why's it got to be about hair? Because it's, <laughs> a total, it's a total look now. You can't have a bald spot and be a top player. Anyway, Michael, did you like this match segment and where they're going with it so we can move along with SmackDown? Because we got a rumble no, prediction show to get like through. It. You didn't like it? No. You don't like Alpha retaining? I, I didn't like the match. Oh, why didn't you like it? Just didn't? I didn't. It didn't tickle my fancy. There you have it. <laughs> I thought it was a very poor American Alpha match. Thank you for your detail. Because response. they're working with Luke Harper and Randy Orton. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Randy Orton is boring to be in the <laughs> ring anymore. The only bright spot about this match was the Randy Orton DDT, which looked nasty. Well, Chad Gable. To, Jad, yeah, that looks, to Chad Gable. That looks sick. That was my bright spot of the match. Other than that, I thought it was average at best. Wait, you know what? I haven't mentioned this on the show either. Speaking of Chad Gable, shout out to Portrait Machine Queen on Twitter for the portrait of me she drew because apparently I look like fucking Chad Gable. Yeah, apparently um, I'm not good enough for a fucking drawing. That's well, fine. You know, Whatever. Yeah. 
That's not on me. No, I that's fine. I'll, I'll make you one. Second See, there you go. I don't want your stick figure portrait, all right? You behave. I don't do stick figures. Anyway. Well, we, some would argue that mine would be a dick figure. Maybe, maybe, really. <laughs> maybe we can find common ground here. Roshanna, do you agree with Michael's opinion on this match? Um, I don't, uh, I guess I do. I don't, I don't know what oh, they're trying to do. Yes, you do. Do you or don't you? Yes. Have your own goddamn opinion or don't come on this show. Gotcha. What else happened on SmackDown this week? But no, she was giving her opinion. Uh, I said I agree with you. You basically said everything. You said everything. She agrees with you. Like, I just well, want I want Bray to have his solo run. That's all I want. Well, that's that's one of the big things that we could say coming off of this match was you had another Wyatt mix up with <laughs> Luke Harper Bray and Randy Wyatt. Orton. And he accidentally hit and uh, Luke Bray Harper Wyatt. accidentally hit Bray Wyatt and Bray Wyatt walked down on both of them. Sure First did. time you've ever seen Bray Wyatt walk out on his family. Yeah, I don't think we've ever seen that before. No, so it's a it, it, that was the the most interesting part of the match, and it wasn't even. I still think it's going to be a swerve with the Orton turning of it. It's got to be. He is too over just to be a member of the Wyatt family. Like seriously, he's still. Oh, when the... You can say what you want. No. About him. Well, yeah, I mean, like when when he had the title, like when him and Bray, then you know they won the titles. I mean, like that that did something, and then you know. They barely why had it, and they lost that, it. If it was him and Bray that are winning the titles, why does it is it Orton and Harper every time they're going after him? Well, let me slow it down. In my opinion, Orton, I like booking him like the swerve. I don't think he's at a point in his career where he needs any title. He does not need to be in the title picture anymore. Yeah. He's been there, yeah. done that. Book him as an attraction. Guys. Yes, an attraction is where he needs to be, and I think that's how they're going to book him. I bet you Rashenda finds him attractive. Who? Don't you? Bray Who, Randy? Randy Orton. Who, me? Yeah, you. Oh, he's a he's he's a good looking guy. Uh huh. I mean, he is but a pretty man, Michael. Let's be I'm honest. not. I'm not gonna say he's like my main crush Monday, where I'll be posting pictures of him. Oh, you, you his, hair, his hair's not long and 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 oily enough. <laughs> like Bo Dallas. No, it's uh, Seth Rollins. If I was a girl, I'd like Bo Dallas. He believes. <laughs> himself. Bo Dallas. And that's and confidence Bo Dallas is an attraction. Like, that's who should have drawn a picture of you is you looking like Bo Dallas. Because his physique looks a lot more like ours than Chad Gable. Do I look like Bo Dallas? You, you kind of do with short no, hair. No, I don't see it. Uh, anyway. I don't see it. Well, I've seen him with his shirt off. Okay, well I haven't, so you, you yeah. got you got one. <laughs> Can we move all right. What else <laughs> happened on SmackDown this week? Alexa Bliss? Uh, Dolph, uh, yeah, Dolph like actually her, showed showed, like showed some guts this week. Rosenda, what's going on with the ladies on SmackDown with Alexa Bliss and all that stuff? Who gives a uh, <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Oh, no. Same, same old, same old. I guess Becky's going to have a rematch for her title. Yep, yeah, in a, in a steel, steel cage. cage. First ever SmackDown. In a steel cage. So we're going to have a, a shit fest women's title match in a steel cage between two people that obviously were not meant to work together Their ever. table match was not good, like their, we've said. Any of their matches were not good. Have they ever had a good match? I don't think so. I think that it's been kind of sloppy. The SmackDown, and NXT, they probably had a good the match. The SmackDown Women's Division. How many good matches do you ever see? It's not strong. You also had uh, Natalia and, uh, speaking of the women, Nikki Bella, blowing off their we're feud, not, apparently. We're not, we're not mentioning that. Okay, let's move right along. <laughs> Michael, that yeah, was... I, I know that's what you had John, bestie was looking Speaking of to. matches of the week, I gotta go with the Judy Martin as my match of the week, of course. But Dolph Ziggler and Kalisto, in your opinion, you told me the soft fair was your match of the week on my all the My match shows. of the week, I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought this was a very entertaining match. Um, I like the ending because, not because Dolph Ziggler lost, but because of the shock value with him getting his new heel push, um, and him just Again, again? Shit. Yeah, again, for the 18th time. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Dolph is always gonna be better as a heel than he is a face. He's just too... I'm sorry, when your nickname is the show-off, it's kind of hard to be a face. True. If you're known as a show-off... Shawn Michaels. Yeah, if you're, if you're known to be a show-off, what makes that a, appealing to... Uh, somebody that's supposed to root for you. <laughs> it's that, not that makes you, you sound like a kids makes be. you sound like a cocky prick, right? It, it does. So that's what Dolph Ziggler's meant to be. He is better as a heel, and he's got that dark heel hair now. Unfortunately for Ziggler, his feuds with Apollo fucking Cruz, who nobody gives two shits about the way he's been booked. Nope. He's a phenomenal talent yeah. in the ring. As Uha Nation on the Indies, he was tremendous. But that was the Indies. Oh, once this is once again, Ziggler's worth is is going to be putting over younger guys, and this heel. 
this heel turn is not going to go anywhere for him. And he's going to be lost. I, in the you, you know what? Ever ever since SummerSlam, like when I actually, well, I guess when the, I know, well, it was my first time actually seeing Dolph in it, like put some effort, like being a heel. I was like really pumped for his match at SummerSlam. And then when he like completely just deflated, I was like, I'm done. Like, I was like, I'm done with Dolph. And I've like been talking crap about him like the whole entire time. And, and I then, think like every crowd we've seen on TV more, Mori Chief was done with Dolph. He was getting booed as a face. So they it's kind of like they yeah. had to turn him. You can totally tell. Yeah, and this, it's, yeah, and and just like Mike said, like this match of the week, like I I'm gonna give it to Dolph too because it was it was good to see that fire reignited in him. But it's like it's gonna build up and build up, and I'm just waiting for it to you know just fail again. And your main event on SmackDown. Speaking of fail again, Bar Baron Corbin and John Cena. Uh, Michael, this match wasn't very good from what I saw. No, uh, I knew it wasn't going to be very good. Two styles and just really, clash. And it's really shitty that they chose this match for John Cena's first match back. They put him with a, a big guy who's not real quick, um, not real versatile in the ring. Um, both of these guys work better with smaller guys. These are the kind mm -hmm. of guys that you never put together. It's well, just, yeah. like I said, it, it just it just doesn't work well when you put... Once in a while you have to, but you pick and choose the right guys. This to shouldn't be your main event, though. True that? No, I totally agree. It should have been the main event of the first hour. Did you catch this match for Shenda with Cena and Baron Corbin? I did. Um, it, it, it not, Nothing didn't stand out, you know, to me that was, like, worth, you know, hey, that was, was kind of cool. And it comes it back, I feel like John Cena, to me, is has always been kind of like the male version of Bailey for me. Everything in the ring looks very rehearsed. Yeah. Um, nothing looks... Cena's come a long way, though. Let's be honest. Let's now, he's give better. Us... He's better than he was, but, I mean, that's like saying that his... <laughs> His turd is 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 <laughs> is smaller than it used to be coming out of his asshole. You know what I mean? It's it's full on description. Yeah, I, it for me, John Cena will never be believable in a ring. He's probably I don't uh, care how big he is. He does not. He he has no kind of continuity as far as making his moves look real. Um, his moves always look springboard stunner. Yeah, that's all that's I gotta say. And and the the top rope leg drop on a guy that's bent over. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? It, it, I got to I got to you know what? I got to call myself out Michael once again, give you the credit for the most entertaining part of SmackDown again this week is the Miz. He just continues to impress the hell out of me with what they're giving him. I got to give the man credit. It's I'm liking this. Mm -hmm. I love I say it each week. I love that Ambrose is back down in that mid card range yep. because he is not a world title guy. Rosetta, do you think Ambrose <laughs> is a is a more mid card guy in your eyes or like he is a legit world title contender? Like you could take him seriously, so. Mid card. Awesome. Yeah, very he's good. yeah he's a mid carder. I only say that because like, um, well yeah because when when he did win the the title like I didn't feel uh that he, uh um, how am I gonna word this that it was it was I don't he, know figure it the fuck out that it how validated are you gonna word him it? as a legit top contender you like my professionalism Michael thank you. okay yes thank you that it didn't it didn't suit him like it, you don't even yeah. Care. Can't let her think for herself. I was giving her a boost. She knew what she wanted to say. I was just helping her out. Thank right. you for being an ass, Mike. On the fucking ground for she just so thanked cool. you for being an ass. Yeah, why, you, why you're can't... too busy spewing your mouth. You I don't give a it. shit. Why don't you just put your coat down on the ground for her to walk on? <laughs> oh my Christ. god! Really? Just because she's a female, you got to fucking help her out. I would have helped anyone else. <laughs> don't even, don't even play that card. See, I knew this would happen. So you asked for it. You wanted the female <laughs> guest, and you get what you receive. Or so, somebody with their own opinion, not yours. She has her own opinion. I was just helping her. But it's documented yeah, that you're me. being a prick. Hey, Rashenda, do you have to take a pee soon? Because Travis will be there to wipe your wipe your ass and, and whatever else you can oh, wipe. Yeah, will you be serious? <laughs> anyway, that was SmackDown this week, guys. <laughs> Across the board, what grade do you give the show, Michael, this week? B minus. And Judy Martin. Yeah, I'd give it a B minus as well. I'll give it a C. Ooh, God, she's she like didn't the, like she's, it. She's like the East German judge. <laughs> she gave Raw the D. She gives this one the, the Canadian C. judges too are pretty pretty harsh. God, so, yeah, you're, that was... you're harsh. I don't ever want to <laughs> perform anything in front of you because I feel like <laughs> <In the ice laughs> she shit all over. You <laughs> Christ, you're so lucky she she was a fan. Of I the could show. do a four fifty splash in front of her and she would give me a three. Oh great! No, I wouldn't. No, no, I, I would actually give you a nine. Sleeve. Oh. I'll give you a nine on that. Ooh, see? She's a fan. Why don't you put your coat down for her? She's being nice. 
All the shit like you've it. given her, she's still being a lady. I don't you got to give that to her. I, don't I mean, put come my on. Coat down for anybody. I'm if sorry. I was her by now, I'd be just. I don't. It takes through. a strong woman to love me. I'm sorry. I don't put my coat down for anybody. I put it down for the worthwhile stuff. Okay. I wouldn't ask you to put your coat down for me, anyways. <laughs> good. When we come back, I don't usually wear one. Can I? Can I bring it home? Okay, for good. Me? When we come back, it's our Royal Rumble predictions. A little bit of news, talk about some Kenny Omega news, Michael, I'm, I, a lot of people have been Woo! talking about. I got some opinions on that a lot of people might sour on. Uh, Good. Mm -hmm. We come back, we also got a fan question this week, and top three this week. What is our top three this week, Michael? Top three Royal Rumble moments of all time. So stick around, we got more me, Michael, and Rashenda on the Slam Pigs podcast, number 40. We'll be right back. Who's the first promo break real quick? Michael, take it. Uh, oh, now you get that in there? Yeah, I forgot. I'm, I'm you, pumped you for the predictions part. I'm, I'm Jesus, overlooking. Mary Do you just want me to take it? Well, I, since I it's our spring. first female guest, I'm going to go with the female promo. Alundra Blaze. I'm going with oh. AJ Lee and her divas Her pipe promo. bomb yes. shell, whatever. Yep. Go with AJ Lee and her pipe bomb here on the Slam Picks podcast. I feel like... Like, listeners of this episode need to make a drinking game of every time you say we have a female guest. Because I think it's in, like, the 30 range by now. Like you've said. <laughs> I have not said that many times. It feels like, it feels like I'd be really drunk right now. I feel like you're, you're just over-exaggerating things right now. But here's the always fine AJ Lee, one of my good pick one. of a man and the other two were also there it, it was great it really was and it, it was it was the end of the world and it's only sunday nights on the e-network Do you want to know what I see when I look in that ring? Honestly? A bunch of cheap, interchangeable, expendable, useless women. Women who have turned to reality television because they just weren't gifted enough to be actresses. And they just weren't talented enough to be champion. I have done more in one year than all of you have done in your entire collective careers. I have saved your Divas division. I have shattered glass ceilings. I have broken down doors. Why? So. So a bunch of ungrateful, stiff, plastic mannequins can waltz on through without even as much as a thank you? You just skip! You just You guys can't even go backstage and shake my hand and look him in the eye because you know that I worked my entire life to get here. I gave my life to this and you were just handed 15 minutes of fame. I didn't get here because I was cute or because I came from some famous wrestling family or because I sucked up to the right people. I got here because I am good. I earned this championship and no matter, no matter how many red carpets you guys want to walk in your $4,000 ridiculous heels, you will never be able to lace up my Chuck Taylors. You are all worthless excuses for women 
and you will never be able to touch me. And that is reality. And we're back, Slam Pigs Podcast. Michael, that was AJ Lee cutting one of the best promos a woman has ever cut on WWE television, in my opinion. The show always looks so good. She really does. That's besides the point. We are back with our guest from episode number 40, Rashenda. Welcome back, Rashenda. Thanks for sticking around for the long haul. Thank you. Thanks for putting up with me. Well, you're not the one that anyone you're has welcome. to thank for me to put up you're with, trust welcome. me. You're fine. You're Michael, welcome. welcome back. That's fun. You've just been fired up this week. I'm not fired up this week. I'm fired up all the goddamn time. Well, let's get amped. Let's not get. Let's get amped because it's it's my favorite pay per view of the year. I know it's yours. It's our Royal Rumble prediction. Are we drawing this this year? We're gonna sure. we're gonna put some we're gonna put some moolah down and we're gonna draw sure. out of the thirty entrants. We're both gonna draw fifteen and one of us is gonna win. All right. <laughs> sure. We're gonna put we're gonna put a little piece of paper in there one through thirty. And we're each going to draw 15, and whatever number wins, we get the moolah. I'm really excited for the Rumble. I don't know about you guys. Something about it this year, I think the fact that it's in a huge building, I think the atmosphere is going to be off the hook. Can we say why we need to draw more than one? Because well, you and I both picked a number before, and the last time I picked a number the it was worst, Santino Morella. And he lasted and he went out, one yes. second in 2009. That was hilarious. I picked number 27. That was your that money was, bet. And that, that was, was Morella. You couldn't, couldn't have planned that so much better. Anyway. The Royal Rumble, let's start at the top, guys. The match itself, 30 guys this year. So many ways they could go. We have two world titles this year from going into WrestleMania. A lot of things have changed from last year's Royal Rumble. Obviously, I, I think we should go the opposite way. I think we should save that for last. You want to save that for last? Yes. Okay. Tag team title match, Raw. Let's just do it. The Club, new, club I almost, versus... I almost said the New Day. See that? Yeah. They've been champs so long. Yep. The Club versus Cesaro and Sheamus. Who's getting over, by the way, a little bit? Who's winning this match, Rashenda? Mm, I have to I have to go with my boys. I'm gonna say the club. I I think it's gonna be their time soon. I don't think it's their time yet. I'm no. gonna go with Cesaro and Sheamus, Michael. You're picking against the club. Uh, can you you blame think they're me? gonna get over at WrestleMania? Do they ever get over on a pay per view? I'm just saying. Michael, who you like? I gotta go with the club here. I think Sheamus and Cesaro are transitional champions. I think this sets up for Enzo and Cass to win the belts at WrestleMania. I think that's what they're holding off. That's why they have them working with Rusev right now. Um, I think Enzo and Cass are going to get that big push. I think you're going to see the rematch at the next pay-per-view. Um, is it going to be Elimination Chamber this year? I don't know. I'm not I, sure. I heard they're bringing it back. I hope they are. No, I thought, I, thought, I thought they took it out. They, it's been taken out. I'm not sure. It hasn't actually. been around for what, like two, three is years? Is it Fastlane is the February pay-per-view, I, I think. I thought, no, Fastlane's the one they have after WrestleMania. Uh, I don't know. Man, they mix, so, they've mix. they mixed it up so much. It used year. to be it's Elimination like, Chamber before WrestleMania. Well, the February pay-per-view, yeah. whatever it is. Uh, uh, I, I see the rematch happening Fastlane. between these it's two Fastlane. teams. It is Fastlane. It, yeah, it's Fastlane's in February. Fastlane's going to be before WrestleMania now. Yes. I think it, it was like the last two years too. I think it was in February. Yeah. Because last year yeah, was, it, Rock, yeah. uh, okay. Seth Rollins like a triple threat. Okay. With Cena. Yeah, I, I could know. be wrong. Whatever. I don't know. Um, but anyway, Ladies I could right. see, <laughs> I could see the club either winning the Royal Rumble or the next pay per view. They're going to WrestleMania as champs to lose to Enzo and Cat. Fair enough. SmackDown uh, tag team title match. It's going to be the Wyatts and American Alpha again, Michael. Since I know you don't give a shit, real quick, who do you think? Because I know you don't like the team of American Park. Alpha. Okay. American Alpha is going to win just because of the storyline of the Wyatt. This is where they're going to do the split up of Randy. And, I think it's going to happen at the next pay per view. Um, okay. Whether whether the like I said, it could go either way with this. I don't know how they're going to book it. Whether the Wyatt's win it back just to lose it the next month so that Orton and Wyatt can wrestle at WrestleMania. Yeah. Either way, it's going to be Orton and Wyatt at WrestleMania. Rashenda, who do you like in this one? Wyatt. She likes the Wyatt. Wyatt the belts. You think the Wyatts are going to stay together through WrestleMania, huh? Yeah. All right. And do you think they will they will have a rematch with Alpha or another team at WrestleMania for the belts? Um, I it it would probably be American Alpha. I'm not sure of another tag team that's uh pretty it's, popular it's at the moment. All right, well you're wrong, but we'll let that go. Really, it's an opinion. It's predictions. It's the wrong one. No one's Nostradamus over here. Well, what do you think, Travis? 
I think American Alpha uh, retain. I think they do the breakup uh, angle at the Rumble. I think that's this is where that happens, and I think you go from there to build up to WrestleMania. In the old school, I think uh, in the February pay per view, you get like Luke Harper versus Randy Orton and like a bunch of stipulations added on, or you're gonna see Luke Harper and Randy Orton on Raw a million times until WrestleMania. You think? You think, you think Randy Orton kicks his leg out of his leg? Sure do. Sure, <laughs> <laughs> I sure do. Sorry, Rashendo, if you don't get that. Uh, women's I got it. Raw Women's Title Match. Charlotte, your Woman of the Year 2016, Michael. Absolutely. Defending against your least favorite wrestler of Women's Wrestler of the Year, Bailey. Yep. Rashenda, who like do you Bailey. like in this championship match? Oh, I'm going to have to give it to Charlotte because I am not a Bailey fan. Ooh. You guys just keep finding all this common ground. You want to put her down the oh, website? Shut up. I'm just saying. Quit trying to make common ground and make us best buds, okay? <laughs> Christ. I don't, just become best friends. I'm not best buds with anybody except for you. All right? And that's because you're my brother. Oh, bless your heart. Yeah. Um. So, <laughs> Charlotte's winning this match. There's no reason for Bailey to win it. it makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I see Charlotte holding the belt through WrestleMania once again. Um, there's there's nobody better on Raw. I don't see why you would take it off of her. Okay. Unless, unless they're going to... Like I like had predicted before... If Ronda Rousey would have won her fight, which we haven't talked about, Ronda Rousey we dabbled in talking. Ronda about Rousey it. got destroyed in less than a minute. If Ronda Rousey would have won her fight, uh, the schedule was for Ronda Rousey to be at WrestleMania to go against Charlotte. Now what? I don't see it yeah. happening. Um, she has no credibility you now. Nunez now? <laughs> no. Um, I, anyway, you can't have Nunez because Nunez has trouble speaking English. Yeah. Well, Oscar's <laughs> your NXT Women's so, Champion. Like that would be awesome. Oscar, Oscar Nunez, and Charlotte. Yeah. Oscar and Nunez. Think about that. I'm talking about Oscar and Charlotte. Or Oscar and Char- I, I, in my opinion, this never uh, wrestled. I think we see Charlotte retain. I think we see a miscommunication where Sasha accidentally calls Bailey the match. There's friction. February pay per view. The same Bailey. thing. We get the heel turn at the February pay per view. Sasha turning heel on Bailey. Finally, maybe he gets Charlotte versus Nia Jax at WrestleMania. Maybe uh, some. Maybe no. Maybe somewhere in there you sprinkle in a title change on Sasha Bailey. We get that NXT Brooklyn rematch at Mania. But somehow, I think we're gonna have Sasha as a heel going into Mania in some form or another for a title. So who are you picking in the title match? At the Rumble, yeah. I'm picking Charlotte. Okay, but all three of us are going Charlotte. Yes, across the boards. <laughs> That's the first one we've all agreed on. Is there an Intercontinental <laughs> title match? Um, probably not. Yeah, uh, I haven't heard of one. I've heard one to be set. Good, because there hasn't been anything set yet. All right. So, yeah. We have to find out who's going to win it at the Rumble first, and I'm not looking to see what they're going to try to do at WrestleMania with the IC belt. The <laughs> champ that runs the camp and the face that run the place. They've had nothing but good matches, in my opinion. I don't think they've had a bad match oh, yeah. yet. John um, Cena's best oh, yeah. matches. Some of them, yes. Um, but here's the big one for me, my favorite title match. I'm looking forward to going in, obviously. I'm sure we all are. Uh, who do you guys got in this, Michael? And how do you see it happen? AJ Styles. I don't want your life. Yep. We're going to varsity <laughs> blues on this one. Um, AJ Styles, I think, <laughs> I think wins. <clears throat> I think he wins because of interference from The Undertaker. Yeah. That's what I'm going with. I think it sets up The Undertaker and John Cena. I think that's what they're going to go with at WrestleMania. As much as I would love to see Styles and The Undertaker, I think that's what they're going to set up. <clears throat> There's going to be some kind of interference. Styles wins it. Um, Styles will go against whomever they choose, whether it be the Rumble winner or whatever they choose. Yeah. I got Styles in this one. Rashenda, I know you're a big Styles fan. Probably your favorite. Oh, yeah. Guy. Maybe be unbiased, though, on it. Who do you like in this match? AJ Styles. Is he 16th title? Is she, he going to tie Ric Flair? She likes AJ Styles. That's good. I think we're all going to agree on certain predictions. So nobody thinks that uh, uh, Cena's going to get a 16th title at the Rumble. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't know if that's going to happen. I know that's a bold statement. I don't know if Cena... It's going to happen. I don't know I don't if, know if it do happens. I don't think it happens at the Rumble. But it's gonna happen. I think happen. that upsets so many people, though, if they do that. Like, I don't know. Because a lot of that fan base that upsets are the subscribers to the network, the diehards. The casual fan isn't subscribing to the network. Are they gonna so, stop watching wrestling because he won his 16th title? No, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I like AJ Styles. To Brashenda, why do you like AJ Styles in this match? Why do I like him? Uh... Is there a backstory to this? Do you see something coming out of it? Mm. No? 
Once again, no, 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 no response on that one. No. Just short answers. Yeah, I'm just the woman. Simple yes or no. <laughs> Will you be serious? You don't know why, but it's the way it's gonna be. God. I just see. I know. I I just see him retaining because going into the Rumble, I'm I'm hoping it's gonna be him and the Undertaker. That's the match I want to see. She sees Styles and the Undertaker. So we'll we'll get to that later. So that's your your world. Or that's your WWE Championship match. The the Red Fruit Loop World Title, Michael. It could be the <laughs> the Hawaiian Punch Belt. Put him in, man. Put him in the cage. Jericho suspended above the ring against Kevin Owens. Or, I'm sorry. While Kevin Owens goes against Roman Reigns for the Universal title. I guess I'll take this one yep, first. Your turn. Um, this is going to kind of spoil my role. Maybe not yet. I like Kevin Owens in this. I think somehow, some way, Kevin Owens finds a way. I think we see... Do you remember when they when they suspended China above the cage with, like, Triple H versus Owen Hart? Yeah. And they did the gimmick where, like, she dropped a chain through the cage. I think we see something like that. They're still going to find a way to cheat. You Not... think, do you think Chris Jericho gets a nosebleed like Jerry Lawler? <clears throat> Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? That could add to the match. Uh, probably a lot more than it's going to because we've seen this match many times. I'm going to call it right now. This match is going to bore the shit out of me because we've seen it 50 times on Raw. Guys, who do you like in this match? Roshenda, what do you think? Do I have to pick? Yes. Uh, even though I'm not looking forward to the match? Mm-hmm. We all pay our sacrifices on the show. Yep. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, I guess I guess I'll give it to KO. I sat through a whole Titus O'Neil why, segment why two you, weeks in a row for this show. <laughs> why do you think Kevin Owens wins this match? Because uh, it's KO, that's why. They're going to let him have his title run. Because it's why. KO, that's why they're going to let him have a title oh, run. Jesus Michael, who do you like in this match? <laughs> You're killing me. I'm trying so hard You're to be nice. You're killing me. we got you a lot no of idea. show left. You we keep no, backtracking. I'm trying to be nice, and you're just killing it. <laughs> it who Jesus. You, who do you I'm not passionate, you're like Jesus I'm not passionate about that Superman. match. I don't have anything to say. Yeah. You just don't watch Raw, do you? It's hard to. <laughs> It's hard. Yeah, it really is hard. Like three hours like for your kicks. Yeah. <laughs> kicks. <What's... laughs> Michael, who do you like in this match? For Christ's fucking sakes. Just say it. I like Kevin Owens. You like us? I do. But for the point that I could see Kevin Owens going against his best friend at WrestleMania. Have we Have we had a, a prediction where we haven't all agreed across the board yet? Yes, this is the the last two have been the ones where we all agreed. Now it's time for the big one, the one we all been waiting to talk about, the Royal Rumble match itself. And so many ways you can go in a Royal Rumble match. You can fuck it up with Batista. You can make it awesome with Stone Cold Steve Austin. I even liked when Vince won the Rumble. I I liked that. You know, I thought it at the time. I thought it was hilarious. Vince was hilarious. He's such a good heel. Water. Uh, Michael, do you want to take it first? I know this is the no, hardest I'm prediction to, to make I'm, of the year. I'm going to be a gentleman for once in my life. Okay. Giving it to the lady. There you have it. Oh, you're going to give it to me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm giving it to you. you oh, gotta take God. It. Oh, you better deliver. Oh, like I special always, delivery I, Jones. <laughs> oh, I always <laughs> deliver. Don't My, you worry. Rashenda, who do you like to win the Royal Rumble match <laughs> this year? Who I who I like? Oh, um, I'm not in it, so don't pick me. Yeah, don't pick Michael. It's, I know he was an odd <laughs> favorite, but he has an injury, calf injury. He can't make it this year. If I have an injury in my calf. Oh, I thought I thought we were picking our top three that we're going to enter. I didn't know we were going to pick uh, who no, was. No, to win the whole thing. Who do you like to win the whole Royal Rumble match this year? Oh, um, I'm going to say I'm not in it. I predict thirty guys <laughs> winning the Rumble this year. Um, well, okay, since since we don't know, like, half of the contestants, I'm just going to go on a whim and since I'm not be spontaneous. Oh, yeah, I'm going to say it's going to go to Triple H. Again, Triple back H, to back. back to back, winning. Triple H comes so back, wins your, the Rumble. Your thoughts on why he wins the Rumble? Mm. Hold on, I was drinking water. Oh. For Triple well, H, shout be, out to Triple right, H. Were you spitting it out like Triple H yeah, does? Yeah, that's, that's what she was getting ready to do. She was going to make a grand uh, explanation. She needed to spit the water. Like she's done that. Okay. Um. Oh, I well, I say that because that is the best way. <laughs> oh, for what? Fuck's sake! <laughs> Couldn't resist. No, I Sorry. Oh, 
quiet. No, um, no, I I think him winning the Royal Rumble will set up the Triple H Rollins feud into WrestleMania. See, like Rollins as the champ going into WrestleMania against Triple H mm-hmm. the challenger. Well, that's your that's your role. Main, I didn't think of that scenario, Michael. I I think there's a good reason for that because it's fucking stupid. Really? No way that fucking that Triple H wins the Rumble back to back. Really? Yes. For, for God's sake. Everybody knows it's going to be Triple H and Rollins at WrestleMania. Why the fuck would it be for the belt when neither one of them are holding it or even in con- title contention? Would Jesus you, Christ. Will you be serious? And fuck. But fine. Fine. Vince Russo, hot shot. How do you book the 2017 Rumble? It's, it's really tough for me to pick one because I could see a bunch of different scenarios. But you only get one. But if I have to pick one. And you got to stick to your guns. I'm going with Finn Balor. You like Finn Balor to return at the Rumble? Haven't heard a lot about Finn. It's either going to be Finn Balor or Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho setting up Owens and Jericho. Yes. Okay. I could see Finn Balor winning it and going against Kevin Owens, um, because Finn Balor never lost it for one. He's mm-hmm. going back for it at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Um, I could see Chris Jericho winning it because obviously he's already the United States champ. I oh, could that's see. Just a uh, but I could, feud. and he's best friends with the champ. Yes. Yes. I could see that feud. Ending off at WrestleMania, I think the crowd would actually love that match. I could see that match. I mean, interesting I know to that, see who the crowd would side. With. I know who I know they've wrestled before, but not since they've been besties. Yeah. Um, it, there's a couple. I mean, you could also make arguments for the Undertaker because he's going to end the champ like we talked about Goldberg, before. Possibly. No, you don't think Goldberg and Brock at WrestleMania. Um, there's a couple different guys you like. I know, I, I know where you're going to go with this with your underdog. Well, don't spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it for you, even though you've already said it. But there's a couple different scenarios I could go with here. But my pick, if I had to pick one, if Finn Balor returns at the Royal Rumble, he wins it. That is a bold prediction. We're both going to there's have... No, there's no evidence or rumors of that, but... Every... Not not yet. We still we still have time, though. That is true. Anything could happen. Um. And it, it, Cena heals so fast. Christ, he heals like Superman. Well, Cena does steroids. Anyway, well, that's neither here. Nor here. Um, <laughs> he gets he gets drug tested what once every five years. I can say one thing for all the Royal Rumble podcasts out there doing predictions. This may be the boldest roundtable for predictions this year. Both of you, <laughs> in my opinion, have some pretty bold picks that are pretty long shots, and I'm going to continue that trend. Like Sammy you Zane. said, Sami Zayn. Yep. Um, yes, I'm, I think. <laughs> A lot of people sleep on that pick. Um, one of the matches of the year for me last year was Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens uh, at uh, Money in the Bank or one of those pay per views. Anyway, they have had what? <laughs> one of those pay per views. They've pay-per-views. wrestled how many times in WWE? <laughs> even even in NXT. How many times have we seen it? I think the way they have been building up Sammy too many Zane with Braun Strowman. <laughs> Thank you. Too many. This, really? Mm-hmm. This is a my long mm-hmm. shot pick this mm-hmm. year. My I'm dark sorry, but is Sami many... Zayn to win the Rumble and go into WrestleMania f- to wrestle Kevin Owens? I know you don't get a backup, yeah. but an honorable mention. My backup would have to be. How can you just? I don't know. It, it's so hard to to see where they. Who's your go. backup? I don't know. The Undertaker, probably. Honestly. I mean, that's a safe bet at this point. It's okay. So you like? Rusev. Fuck Rusev. Rusev? It's going to be Rusev. <laughs> Rusev? Fuck, fuck it. I don't know. Yeah. He Sammy Zayn. He made it again. Rashinda has... Has there been a show that Rusev has not made? I don't know. Rashinda had <laughs> Triple H, Michael. Yeah. And you <laughs> had... What's his name? Chris Jericho. So, no, I had Finn Balor. Oh, make up your mind. Finn Balor, yeah. Finn, Finn Balor. So there are three incredibly... Long shot picks, in my opinion, because I think they're going to go with Stan, status quo and do like Stan Hansen. Well, that's what you're going to do. <laughs> they're going to go with Stan Hansen. <laughs> um, <laughs> when we come back, we got a little bit of news to talk about. We got a fan question. We get our top three. And Michael, I'll take the promo break since you just said it. Here he is, the man, Stan the Lariat Hansen, on the Slam Pigs podcast. We're sending a stick around. We'll be right back. You've been hiding behind the referees. You've been behind behind the promotion because you know, you know that I'm a better man. And I don't care where it is from Timbuktu to, to California or whatever. I'd like a shot at his belt. I demand one. I deserve one. And by all means, it comes to me with respect because I am the biggest, baddest man from Texas ever seen. 
and something Bob Backlund cannot handle. What kind of champion would Stan Hansen make? One that the people could look up to? What type of man is Stan Hansen as a champion? Well, definitely they can look up to me because I'm so much bigger and taller than most of all these squatty little Yankees around here. They'd have to look up to me. They'd have to look up because I'm the biggest, baddest guy. I demand respect. When I walk in the ring, people stand up. They know they see a champion. They don't want a guy walking around in a coat and tie like Bob Beckham. They want somebody down on the ground, Jack. Somebody that's from the trenches. Well, that's where I come from, and I'm proud of it. That's what makes me so tough, because I'm so damn hungry. I want it. I want it. Bob Backlund, you've tasted it. You don't know what it's about. You're, your head's way above. You're aloof. But I'm right down where it's at, brother. All the street people know where I come from. That's why. I'm, that's the type of champion I'd be. I'd be right down there with them. All them rednecks out there, they know what type of champion I'd be. Of course, you wouldn't understand that being uh, whatever that is. I think we're supposed to be doing the interviewing, if you don't mind, Mr. Bank. Never mind, never mind. I manage the man, and I can tell him whatever I want to tell him. It's no concern of yours what he and I have in, that, in strict conference. Would you mind telling us what you're uh, conferring about? Yeah, 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 that's right. I'd like to have Backlund. I'd like to get Backlund any place. Let me tell you something. You like Fred Blassie just whispered right in my ear. I'd take Blassie anyway. I'll take Backlund anyway. I mean, I'll take that championship any way I can get it. Even like Mr. Blassie just whispered in my ear as if it was in a steel cage match. A match where the things around where Backlund can't be running. Where Backlund can't be having a bunch of people come in to help us. Well, back on me, get uh, and what would happen in this That's right, I'd be grabbing his hand, boy, and I'd be mashing him right. I'd just be squeezing his face right into that thing. I'd grab him up and take him and run him to the post. And he'd be like a big thing of mush. That's what the cage is all about. And this big fat slob over here would be just like Backlund. He'd be down trying for mercy after I meet in his face into, the ma into those big steel bars. And he'd be bleeding all over the place. It looked like a big plum, a rotten plum. And what would be happening to Stan Hansen? Nothing would be happening to me because I'm too damn tough, boy. No steel cage ever bothered me. I just love it. I can see Bob Backlund shaking in his little boots, worrying about it, going into crying to the WWF for some kind of help to get out of it. Oh, if I could just get it, I could just taste it. I can taste it if I had him in a steel cage. Can you imagine what bad ba Bob Backlund would be doing, Fred? He'd be crying, he'd be kissing his mama goodbye, he'd be kissing his little... And we're back. That was the legend himself, Hall of Famer Stan Hansen. A lot of people don't remember he's in the Hall of Fame, Michael. What is, were you a fan of him as a heel? I think he was a very intimidating guy. He had the tobacco spit. It was fucking gross. You know I like Stan Hansen? Huh. When he got in the ring, it was believable. Exactly. Ask anybody that was in the ring with him. You heard that promo right there, guys. You can't fuck with Stan Hansen. It's getting late. It's been a long show. We're back with our very special guest, lovely Rashenda. Thank you once again for hanging around for this marathon of a show. Royal Rumble Prediction Show. Let's get right into a little bit of news we got this week. Big, biggest story that I've seen all week, guys. Well, one of them. First of all, can I address something? This isn't the news story. Real quick, because I just want to gloss over this. The new TNA logo was unveiled, Michael, by Anthem Sports. They redid the whole logo. I don't know if you've seen the new logo, Rashida. Yeah. Oh, no, man. I haven't. There's like a I haven't fucking, seen it. a blue falcon on it, like an actual bird. What? It looks like the Blue Blazers logo. So, yeah, the Blue Seriously? Blazer wrestling promotion. <laughs> um, it's it's terrible. Ooh. It's not good. I don't know what they were thinking. It has been <laughs> confirmed that Zeb Coulter, uh, Dutch Mantel, is going to be an overseer of a lot of creative. Dixie Carter has nothing to do with anything. She's not even allowed at TV tapings anymore, Michael. That's yes. How we, yes. So. Yes. Yes. Victory. <laughs> but There's hope, maybe some of. bad news. Jeff Jarrett has been slipping his way back in. He's not doing his cash for gold schemes and GFW and all that bullshit. He's coming back. So that, that could be good or bad. We'll see where it goes with Jeff Jarrett, guys. I don't know what y'all think about the TNA stuff. Hmm. That, that'd be kind of interesting. We had a... I, would, I, would, I wouldn't mind seeing him again, though. I think TNA was at its yeah. best when he... Jeff, Jeff Jarrett. Jarrett. I think it was at its yeah. best when he was heading yeah. creative. You're a Jeff Jarrett fan. Yeah, it was. It was, yeah. You like you some Jeff I Jarrett? Was, I was a Jeff Jarrett fan. I mean, Jeff Jarrett fan, not band called. <laughs> Talk about a guy who was a mid-carder who they tried to shove down your throat as a world champion. Who just well, didn't cut it for me. 
Like he's never believable as a top guy in my no. opinion. I just can't get past the singing or fake singing. Hopefully they can get past this logo the and uh, on his outfit. Hopefully this isn't a sign of what's to come for Spend TNA. Spend my days working yes. hard yeah, on the We girl. get it, Michael. Sorry. We get the, the with my baby tonight reference. We get it. Uh, maybe I'll throw this yeah. on just for you this week. Are you happy? Well, maybe. Shana, well, you ever heard maybe that? they'll get enough complaints and they'll change the logo. I don't know. <laughs> Shana, you ever heard Jeff Jarrett sing? No, I haven't actually. Have to look up with my baby tonight. Okay, I will do that. Another, the biggest news story this week, though, Michael, Kenny Omega. A lot of people oh, yeah. think he's rumored to show up in WWE soon. I've got I mean, one of those I know, I know for a fact that that's not happening anytime soon, but I don't know what you guys think on this. He's, I, a, he's under contract. That, that, that is an iffy, but the big thing is he has gone on record multiple times. As he used to be in WWE developmental. People don't know that. A lot of people don't recognize, and they let him go. I'm sure yeah. They've also released Ricochet for Christ's sakes. Which how do you let a guy like Ricochet go anyway? Exactly, he's doing so good in the indies right now. It's insane. Yeah, but he's anyway, he, um, Kenny Omega has gone on record to say that he wants to be known as the guy like a sting of this generation, where he didn't need to go to WWE to make his own. Like he takes pride, just like the Young Bucks do. He wants to be poor. He's not poor. You, uh, when people refer to New Japan as an indie, that is a an asinine statement. Those guys make a killing on the indies and in New Japan. Mm -hmm. There's rumors about the Hardys coming to WWE. WWE, interesting. But the Hardys make so much money on the indies, a lot of people speculating if they'd be willing to risk it. Because that's a big thing for guys now. We're just oh, yeah. in that era where you make more money on the indies. Well, the problem some... with coming to WWE is no matter how big your contract is, we all know the stipulations with WWE. You pay yep. your way yeah. with travel and hotels and all that. So you could get a contract for over a million. And by the end of the year, you might be making half of that. And that's how they get you. So essentially, yeah. um, and there's not a. Union. But you know what you're signing up for. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're signing up for exposure, basically. I, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't see Kenny Omega coming anytime soon. Um, I think he's one of the most valued stars in Japan right now. I think he knows that. I think he's loving it over there, and I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. I don't. Either. I don't think he'd be willing. To, he's just a talent that doesn't want to give up his creative freedom. I think just like a Matt Hardy. It's going to be interesting to see what the Hardys do, too. I don't see it happening, either. You don't see the Hardys coming back? If they did, would it be this broken gimmick, or would no. it be just nostalgic There's Hardys? There's no way you could have that gimmick in PG era. I think we're, are, we're not in the PG era. They've been calling women bitch on SmackDown every week, and I think I think the PG era is fading away. Where's Where's Friendly Cena at? Still He's says, a fucking asshole lately. Still says PG. Yeah, he is. But what do you guys think about Omega, Michael? Still PG. says PG on, on <laughs> show before the years. <laughs> So until that changes, it's well, they're hard. getting away with a lot of shit then on SmackDown. It's, it's hard for me to believe that that a whole lot's going to change with gimmicks, especially with the Hardys. Let me flip the question for you. Let me make it a little more interesting. If you were WWE, would you be interested in Kenny Omega right now at this point? Well, how could you not be interested? Yeah, saying, in your yeah. opinion. Yeah, after I mean, after that match, because a lot of people like Jim Cornette, they can't stand Kenny Omega. Well, I don't. I don't think it has anything. To, I don't think it has as much to do with that one match as the overall product. I think Kenny Omega is a, a great talent that needs to be. There's tweets, hot tweets. Yes. Talk about Kenny Omega and Michael's tweets. Blow up. You know, I got my sources. <laughs> oh, sorry. Tuna Meltzer. Tuna Meltzer. Oh, you got your sources? Dave Meltzer and I are really good friends. So. Uh, no, they're not. Oh, okay. They converse ever. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> you don't know. Oh, it's something I'm not aware yeah, of. Yeah, you're not privy to. Privy to that. Then every one of your predictions should happen then. It's. Or not, does. because Meltzer's actually I mean, it usually does, time. but... Anyway. Well, if that's true, then I'm going to need John Cena to stop trolling everybody. Because he's giving me hope, and it's going to shatter my heart. Wait, what? <laughs> I don't know, but I, I don't think Kenny Omega's coming anytime soon. Um, speaking of coming back, though, to, to WWE, NXT, whatever, Chris Hero returned to NXT at the tapings this week. Cassius Ono once again. So they already have a KO, Kevin Owens. That was Cassius Ono's gimmick in NXT before Kevin Owens was KO. So why not just call him fucking Chris Hero? He's almost 40 years old. You would think he's at a point in his career where he doesn't mind signing over his... Just like Austin Aries has done, Bobby Roode, they've signed over their rights to WWE to use. Yeah. I don't know. I don't get it. But anyway, he's back. I don't know what you guys think about Chris Hero. For me, personally, it may not be a popular opinion. I think he's been one of the most overrated guys in the indies for years. I've just never been a big fan of Chris Hero's work, really. I... For you, you talk about Bailey being an unbelievable in the ring. 
for one, Chris Hero has never been built, even in his prime, but now, when he was first released from NXT, he let himself go so much, and he has such a pot belly now, and he still wears the undies, and it's just so hard for me to take seriously. I know I'm a Kevin Owens fan, but at least yeah. he covers it up. Like, he's an, I, have, I have no idea who that is. I'm just not a Chris Hero <laughs> fan, guys. I don't see what the big deal with him is. I think there's so much better talent out there in the world right now than Chris Hero. Your guys' two cents on it. I don't know, I, I don't know who. He, yeah, I, I can't have an opinion on him because I have no idea who he is. I've like, never heard of his do name. You in even ABC. know a lot about Chris Hero? Yeah, I know Chris Hero. Um, he's been around for quite a while. Actually, it's not like he's new. He is a veteran. Um, he's been in WWE developmental before, and it did work out. So I don't know what he's done lately that would really warrant him being brought back. A lot of people rumored when they released him at first it's because him getting in shape like a Vader or Mark Henry thing. Like, he wouldn't hit the gym. No, it was, it was actually, it came out, it was like a family emergency. So he didn't leave on bad terms. Um, I don't know why it took, like, four, three or four years for him to come back. I don't know if the emergency was that extreme. I don't know the situation. But anyway, that was the... Uh... He's never wowed me in the ring. Uh, yeah. Kind of similar to you. He never really did anything in the ring that really <laughs> warranted me <laughs> wanting to take notice I think a lot of Chris Hero's success for him on the Indies, especially Ring of Honor, was because he was partners with Cesaro as a tag team with the Kings of Wrestling. I think Cesaro pretty much... Well, Cesaro carries a lot of weight that he doesn't get credit for. Yeah, the essential so, dead weight carrier. Yeah, I mean, look what he's doing with Sheamus. He's making Sheamus relevant again. So, Michael, you've asked for some feedback. Also, we got a fan question this week from the lovely Mary Hatcher. I don't know what era she Hello. Has. I don't know if you saw this question. I don't know what error she meant specifically. Her question to us this week, and we're sending it to you if you want to answer. Do we think ECW would work today? Now, I'm assuming she means the original ECW. Because the yeah. WWE version wouldn't work in any era. Nah. It was that bad. It wasn't good. Mm -hmm. ah, Michael, you need a second? Or? Would it work in the PG era? Would it work today? Uh, I, I guess that means on any channel. I mean, Lucha Underground does some pretty extreme shit. Even though I'm not a big, yeah, Lucha they do. I'm not a huge Lucha the, Underground fan. I think the original ECW would work in any era, um, just because it was so different. Fifties. <laughs> yeah, I, I, especially in something like that in the fifties, because it would be even more different. You know what I mean? They did things that wrestling hadn't seen before. I know Jim Morrison went to jail for some lame bullshit. I don't know if ECW could get away with crucifixions and rape angles and you know. I mean, you could you could maybe soften up the angles a little bit, but the actual in ring style. Oh yeah, I think it would I think it would work in any. Well, era. you had that style in the fifties. Uh, Argentina Rocca was a trailblazer, and, and there's a yeah, shout that, out to the half to the fifties wrestling. That's compared to ECW. But so he you think getting, it would? He wasn't getting thrown on barbed wire. Do you think they could <laughs> compete with WWE today with all the shit that's on cable well, they, on demand? No, they would. Do you think compete. anyone at this point can compete? Nobody's going <laughs> to compete with WWE because it's. <laughs> they didn't compete with WWE back when they were hot as ECW in the golden era of wrestling. They left the dent, though. You could say they definitely changed the business. I mean, they made a mark. I they mean, changed the business, flat out. I Good mean, credit to where it's due to Paul Heyman. He changed the I mean, business. But how many of those guys from ECW are alive? Are, are, <laughs> were ever not relevant, to laugh at that. That's were not ever relevant laugh after that. ECW. Yeah. I mean, true. Sabu was in WWE Rob for Van a Damme, cup of coffee. Thomas Dreamer. Uh, Thomas. Thomas Drew. Rashenda, did you ever... Tommy oh. Dreamer guy. <laughs> oh, wow, fail. <laughs> Rashenda, did you ever watch ECW back in the day, like the glory days of ECW? Uh, no, actually, I was introduced to ECW, I guess, when they decided to form with WWF yeah. at the time. Yuck. You yeah. got introduced to the bad ECW, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got, I got, yeah, basically I got introduced Water to, down, to that ECW. Yeah, well, if you ever get a chance, I don't know if you have the network or not to get on YouTube, check out some stuff from the original ECW. I do, I have the network. Oh, yeah, so they have every episode of ECW TV ever, so. Make sure you check out oh, the Yeti. I would, no, that's WCW, Halloween Havoc, with Tony Schiavone, what are you talking about? Well, who was the Yeti? Well, who was, who was the guy <laughs> on ECW, WWE, that uh, The zombie, <sighs> the zombie, yeah. yes. Same, same thing. Same fucking thing. Yeah. Um, there. um that, try, that uh, can can I butt in real quick? Sure, can, can I butt in real quick? Get your butt in there. No, you made you you mentioned like Lucha Underground, like you don't know much about it, but I've been I watching do, but it. I, for, I like, just don't like it. I'm not a fan of it. I know, I know, but I'm just saying, like they have like some elements of like ECW in there, like when it comes to like their matches. Yeah. Some, not all, but just a little bit. 
I think a big thing that um, deters me. They also from, get people paralyzed and they're well, guys John Morrison. They have killed people in angles, like literally murdered them. That's silly in its own, but I'm not. I I don't know how this is going to come off, but I don't care. It's Slam Picks Podcast. I'm not a big fan of intergender wrestling. I don't think it's believable. I, I hate, honestly, intergender wrestling. I think when it's done randomly, in once in a while, age. like when you had Dusty Rhodes and Sapphire against Macho Man and Sherry, that's okay. Well, especially in this day once and age. But it's just, oh, violence. I hate intergender wrestling. This day and age with domestic violence, how is that appealing? Ex- exactly. I'm not, in, in no way am I trying to say, like, women aren't equal to men. It's just... In no way, because I'm sure Ronda Rousey could kick some douchebag down at the gas station's ass with no problem. Yeah. I'm just saying, if you know, you have a trained professional wrestler against a trained woman professional wrestler, obviously, if you put Ronda know, Rousey I'd, in there with Brock Lesnar, I don't think it's going to go well. Even for as Ronda a kid, it, even as a kid, it just hasn't clicked. I don't know if is that sexist, Rashenda. That's just how I feel on it. And I think Lucha uh, Underground has done that so much with sexy star and that whole like she can beat yeah. men like three times or so. It's just it's really hard to, to take sometimes. And I and honestly, I've never ever as much as I love all kinds of wrestling. Michael can vouch. I love Japan wrestling. He does love Japan. I love my Japan. Oh, yeah. But I've never been a fan of like AAA, um, lucha in general. I just I I just don't like like you know well, Mexican lucha libre wrestling. I've just never been a big fan of it. Too much. Yeah. Lucha, you know? <laughs> More fan of the European style. Um, honestly, which is why I'm so excited for this United Kingdom tournament starting this week. And we did. Oh yeah, before. yeah. Me too. It's gonna be awesome. Those guys look pretty good. They yeah, they do. Pretty good guys. You know why Dusty anybody, is doing that? Does, does anybody know why they pulled half the half the guys out and replaced them with the other people? I don't know. Should I guys read up on that? I saw, I didn't see that. I'm Contract sure. issues, possibly, because they worked for mm. maybe Progress yeah. and a lot of British. Yeah. Which is exactly the reason why WWE is doing this, because WWE sees that they're losing the ratings war with other UK federations on television, because WWE television. It's limited in the UK. It's not like it is here where yeah. everybody sees it. And they have to go over there like two or three times a year, yeah. too. So yeah. the other and WWE UK... just can't cannot stand in any demographic not being the best. I mean, you have to have that in business. I yeah. get that. WWE is trying to appeal to that demographic that um, maybe they are not number one in. I mean, let's so. call a spade a spade. For all the great things we've seen in NXT over the last couple of years, WWE has basically cannibalized the indies. They yeah. have taken all the top. The, They're I mean, taking all the top. Ring of Honor had indies. to start from scratch yeah. with Jay Lethal, and th- th- Jay Lethal's tremendous, yeah. by the way. And he's he, always been good. Yeah. I'm so sad because he's been re- he just resigned with Ring of Honor, and I like Ring of Honor, but man, I just think he could shine so much in an NXT year. Jay Lethal was tremendous. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. 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 Um, the Briscoes, my now. God, the Briscoes, m- maybe my favorite tag team in all of wrestling right now, honestly. But you're a little young. I'm just the Young Bucks. I'm not a huge Young Bucks fan. I think they're pretty silly. I always like them. I think they're they're really talented. I just they're ripping off DX and they're making a living off. Well, of it. I know they got their blessing, but come on. Okay, club, <laughs> big club fan I'm, ripping off the NWO for just, how many years? I'm just saying, just saying. You and your club fetish. I didn't know it was a huge club With fan. Mayo, by the way, which is disgusting. I didn't know they were the Bullet Club anymore, so. Christ. Anyway, that was a Thank you, Mary. They're, for the, they're the elites. Always no, no, Mary. but I, I agree with you, Travis. I wouldn't mind seeing, like, the Briscoe brothers, like, move up. I don't think that um, they are politically correct enough for WWE television. I think Not Mark, DJ, Mark yeah. especially <laughs> Mark Briscoe and his uh, his tweets he likes to send out about his homophobic slurs every now and then, that's why they didn't get yeah. signed in the first place. So I don't blame him. I love him. The Briscoes? Yeah. I know they're probably your favorite tag team in wrestling, too. What's like, that supposed to mean? They're really good. What do you mean? What's that? The Briscoes are the Briscoes, man. You talk about homophobic yeah. slurs and... Then you bring me up into it. Like, they're my favorite. because You I'm totally are the one that correlated those two things. Because, wow, I'm, I'm not saying, even on that. I'm wave. not a homophobe. <laughs> I'm not scared of gay people. Orlando Jordan. I'm not rough? scared of Orlando Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared of Orlando Jordan. <laughs> Frightens me. Why? Because he's black? Really? No, because he's just an intimidating, <laughs> big, built man. I just figured with, I'd ask. With weird question. fetishes. That... I asked the hard questions. Well, it's been episode 40. What better way to go out on... Uh... No, we still got top three. Oh, shit. Yep. It's just a show that would never end like yep. the Lamb Chop song. Correct. A lot of shit to go over. Top three Royal Rumble moments of all time. Not matches, not pay-per-views, just things in general. Royal Rumble has had so many moments over what? How many years now has the Rumble, Michael, been a thing? 30? 
28? It's almost, this is 29, I want to say. Something like that. But yeah, I mean, there's tons of stuff to work with here, guys. Um, I don't know who wants to take this. I got mine lined up, Michael, and I'm out I'll here. start with my number three. All right. Top number three. Top my Royal number Rumble three moment. Royal Rumble moment comes from 1994. Damn you. Damn, he puts oh, dates? Shit. Yes. He's got dates. Oh, yeah. We got dates I got day. dates for days. Okay. Welcome to the Slam Pigs podcast. Yes. Wrestling. <laughs> we got dates. You get your wrestling nerd fix for years on this show. Um, <laughs> I, need to, I need to do some homework. Holler yes, at your boys. You There's your urban oh, style. Fuck. So, would you quit yeah. that shit? Knock it off. Urban off. references the go. Well, we're almost nice. at the end of the road like so boys to men. Oh, you know, I like God. to use that one. Oh! <laughs> you got some Casey and JoJo? Has it been all your life? All my life. I've been yeah. waiting on someone like you to tell me the number three. Oh, my God. Let's do it. <laughs> I swear by the moon, the stars, and the skies. Fuck. That this Ooh, number three oh, better not be what I think oh, it is. Oh. Step on my fucking toes because it's for my rumble too for yeah. my number three. Number three. Bret Hart oh. and Lex Luger. Oh. We're good. Going out at the exact same time. You like that one a lot. First ever you like that multiple one rumble winners had, in history. Yeah, Jack that, Tubby come down and it's fucking Tunny. Tubby. It's Tunny. It should be Tubby. Don't say that in front of Amar Johnson. He's Canadian. French Canadian. Yeah. You, he's not going to like it if you make fun of Jack Tunney. All apologies. So... Um, Bret Hart, Lex Luger, both going out at the same time. Your first ever simultaneous winners. Um, this was actually a lot of people don't realize this. <laughs> the backstory to this, this was actually meant to see who was going to get over more with the fans for WrestleMania. Was it going to be Lex? Was it going to be Bret? And in '94, Lex was a little fizzled Lex, out. Lex was no, Lex was still under that push train. They were trying to shove the him. Fans down. Eyes, he was they were trying to shove him down your throat like a bad fucking salami sandwich. The Roman Reigns in '94, yeah, made in the USA. Lex Luger, yes. Ravishing Rashenda. Do you remember this in 1994 <laughs> with Lex and Brett? Do you go back that far with Rumbles? Yeah. Hello, Bueller. Anyway, maybe she's having some time to go. We'll Rashenda, are you taking a shit? Really? What? No. Do you remember 94? Of all the things you could ask she's doing, that's what you asked. Well, it got a response, didn't it? Rochelle? No, no. No, actually, I, rem I, no, no, I, remember, I remember that moment. I just don't remember the year, but thank you for the year. It's 94. And she thanks you for the year. Well, she, where were you? Where'd you go? Oh, I was, I was uh, plugging in my tablet. Oh, she was I'm charging sorry to, to make sure she had enough juice to get through the show. Oh, excuse me. I'm Apologize sorry. to the sorry guests. Sorry to interrupt your, your electronic. I think Ravish and Rochelle has been a great guest, Michael. I think it's been a solid show, Mike, for number her, 40. Her name is Rotundo. It's Ravish and Rochelle. <laughs> no. Ravish and Rotundo, Rochelle. Rochelle, Rotundo. <laughs> Ravish and oh Triple R. Anyway, my number three is also, in some fucking weird way, we didn't plan this once again from 94, <laughs> but it's something different. Kicking your leg out of your leg? It's close. It's fucking close. <laughs> it wasn't the Owen Hart botched promo. No, mine is when Diesel finally put his stamp on his push and just cleared the shit out what of the Rumble match. Eight eliminations. We had Seven, Virgil, eight. Bart Gunn. You had IRS. So many guys were eliminated so by Diesel. Sparky Plug. Yep. Bob Hoffman. No, Sparky Plug was not eliminated by Diesel. Oh, I'm sorry. And in '94, had a hell of a run in that Rumble. That was his debut. Sparky Plug. If you were talking to Logies, it's his debut. Oh, yeah. Uh, Diesel, I mean, it's, to me, it still stands out as one of the most memorable Rumble moments. He just plowed through everybody. That you you never first, saw anything like that in That Rumble. was the first time you saw somebody really run through people like that. Besides just, maybe Andre the Giant. Yeah, but you saw him just standing in there waiting for people. Yep, I remember and the that. the crowd was going nuts. Yes. Uh, you had Diesel chance. And he was a heel. Rashenda. Ravishing. What do you think? Yes. <laughs> What's your... I, I know you said you only had two moments. Yeah, because it, so you can yeah. start us off at no, hey, your number two. My number two. Oh man, um, your second probably, favorite moment. Uh, probably when Ray Mysterio came back and won. Two thousand six. He entered yeah. at number two. Yeah. Yep. He entered at number two. Won the whole thing. Who did he eliminate at the end, Travis? Triple H. And WWE and all of their top Rumble uh, wins always puts this at number one as the greatest win ever. It's crazy. Yeah. Just because he's little. I I, th I, guess I was a fan of it. I think a lot of this had to do with exploiting the death of Eddie Guerrero, which is why I wasn't yep. a big fan of like the whole low rider sure thing was. they did with Randy Orton. 
And you know what the crowd did in Chicago that year? It's like Chris Benoit won it. When Rey Mysterio won that title, he didn't get a huge pop. And Rey Mysterio has never had a good world title run. I like the pick for the whole underdog story. I think that's one of the best stories they've ever told in the Rumble. I just, I hate what it was, the Eddie stuff. It's all piggybacking off. Yeah. But solid pick. I can't argue with it. Travis, you're number two. It's your, it's your turn. No, it's your turn. It's your turn. I just did 94 diesel. You did 90 plus you. Final take it since you're allergic to to uh, Rey Mysterio, apparently. <laughs> Allergic. That's him sneezing? Yes. Here, this is a oddball pick. <laughs> I, I just love this moment. I love everything that came out of it. From the ass beating afterwards, it seemed like it lasted forever, which was that eating popcorn and brawling through the stands. When Maven eliminated The Undertaker <laughs> in the Royal Rumble, Maven from the first Tough Enough eliminated <laughs> the Biker Undertaker. That fucking crowd went ballistic. It was booked perfectly. This is when Taker had that shitty feud with the Hardys, and you know yeah. what I mean? It was bad. But anyway, I loved it. I love that he just beat the shit out of Maven after it. Like, he just <laughs> made him pay for that. And technically, your Royal Rumble 2002 winner is Maven. Man was never eliminated. Ever. So, eternal world champion, Maven. Alright, Santiago Morello. Or fucking Michael Miguel Cotty. There you have it. <laughs> Christ. There you have it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Curtis Axel. Did you like that moment? I love that moment. It just stands out to me so much. I, it, I mean, I remember it, but it wasn't the moment that stood out to me. The moment that stood out to me in that Rumble was McMahon winning it. That was 99, right? No. This is 2002. Maven eliminated Undertaker. Triple H won the Rumble that I'm talking about. When Triple H had his first comeback from his okay. quad. Injury. Sorry, I got confused. Yeah. Okay. So surprise. Whatever. All right, my number two. My number two would have to be 1992. Ooh. The first ever Royal Rumble match that determined who would become the WWF champion. A lot of people's favorite Rumble. That's always at the top of people's list. That, that whole card was really good. I enjoyed it. Um, but like they did um, last year with, with the Rumble, whoever won the Rumble was the champ. Um, they did this before in 1992, which a lot of Fairweather wrestling fans don't know. Um, you had so many top guys in this Rumble. Um, I could go on and on. Macho Man Randy Savage, Roddy Piper, Hulk Hogan, Sid. I mean, I don't want to say uh, it too you, loud. I don't uh, want to get us taken off the don't, air. Don't. A young Shawn Michaels. Young Shawn Michaels. First singles run. Yes, this is his first singles run. Um, Jake the Snake Roberts. I, I mean, Jesus Christ. This whole Rumble was full of guys that you were like, wow. Uh, Sergeant Slaughter. All these former champions. Um, and your winner. Which surprised me more than anything was Ric Flair. I did not yeah. see Ric Flair winning this. Won the title. Um, he won the title. title. Ric Flair entered at number three and won the whole thing. And Bobby Heenan went nuts. Yes! 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 Yeah. And who could forget the promo after the Rumble? I thought that was one of Ric Flair's best promos ever. Yeah. So um, that's number two for me just out of the occasion and the... Uh, I guess the prize at stake for winning the Rumble. It wasn't just going to WrestleMania. It was actually being the, belt, the champion. The first time it was ever yep. for the belt. Yep. So that's my number two. Ravishing Rashenda Rotundo. Who is your number one? Or is your um, number one? Probably, probably, yeah, I said that earlier, but um, probably AJ Styles debuting in the Rumble. Last year, that was your number one Royal Rumble moment. Yeah, because I marked out and, like, you know, hysterically cried. <laughs> wow. You that was cried. a hell of a debut. I, you I gotta, cried because uh, somebody was there? Because it was AJ Styles, yes. Well, well, that's man, emotional. I still cry when Macho Man and Elizabeth make up at the retirement match at WrestleMania 7. It's sad because they died. Yeah, this Don't make fun just, of somebody crying. Well, no, I just I was trying to get insight on why she cried. You cry when Brett loses the belt? Never. I no, because Never. okay, no, it's because I followed like I followed AJ's career. Like he's like one of the few indie like wrestlers I actually followed. You know him around. You know after he left, like after well, when he like, started. I like DNA AJ Styles and, like, too, but like I I I didn't like cry all over it. You know what I'm saying? Like you're done. I did because I felt that was a that was a moment for me. That's why. Oh, all right. Well, I'm glad that made you emotional. At least it touched. You know, the WWE touches a lot of different fans emotionally. Um, I I can't say that that I cried over that moment. I was excited. Um, I'd heard rumors about him coming before that, 
but I was excited to see him. And I was a little... I knew he had signed. Everyone expected yeah. him, but I, it wasn't for sure he was going to debut in this. I do remember, like, the production team fucking up, and they just had a shot of Roman, so yeah. you couldn't see the Titantron at first. And they, it was supposed to spell out phenomenal, like his Titantron does or whatever, but, the, you know, botched that. I was a little that disappointed. That ovation was crazy. Oh, yeah, I was a little disappointed in the way that his debut ended. But no, he hung in there for like a half hour, I think. I think he had a decent showing. A lot of people assume this was like a one shot. He wasn't going to be like what he is now. And he then was... he jobbed at WrestleMania. The Jericho of all yeah. people. Oh yeah, no. Uh-uh. So who was? That's who he he got eliminated by. So my number one is strictly based off of growing up with you. Oh, our joke style. Things that we love about wrestling. Things that entertain me. It's not a match. It's not an elimination. It's not a title change. It's not an segment. actual review. It is a segment. Do you have a good idea where I'm going? <laughs> a lot of it has to do with certain person's commentary. It is the debut of the narcissist Lex Luger <laughs> at Royal Rumble 1993. One of my favorite debuts. Not because look at it, it look great, at it. Because look at it, look at it, look at it. The, Bobby Heenan's commentary is some of the greatest I've ever heard in my entire life. A lot of people are probably scratching their heads going, really, this is your number one? Yes! Fuck you! Fuck you! This is my number one. It's his favorite moment. He can have whatever moment he wants. Only Mike wants to, like, maybe jerk face know my love for this promo and your love for it. Don't don't hate on it. You know you love it. Oh, my God. Do you want to describe it for the listeners a little bit? It basically sounded like Bobby Heenan was going to masturbate. Well, that's not why I liked it, really. (laughs) That's what it sounded like. If you have missed it, it, it all it, it all please, it all makes sense now. Please look it all up, makes sense Please now. look up Royal Rumble '93. Easy ravishing Rashendo. And, and the and the debut <laughs> of the narcissist because it sounds like Bobby Heenan is seriously having an orgasm during this. This is hilarious. Like during talk about thing. a guy trying to build up somebody so fucking hard. Look at the legs. Look at the packs. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. He literally <laughs> said it like yes. Troll Two. He sounded have you ever like, seen Troll Two and the Oh my god? It, it, it's the same it fucking really thing. really sounded like he was coming in his pants. I'm well, not gonna lie to but, you. Yeah, way to take it across the line. That's what it sounded like. <laughs> Don't act like you never said that. Um, Just because I say that's it neither here nor there. Um, and especially, my own face has nothing to do with my Especially with one. the look at it, look at it. You know, it's. Do you like my number one, Michael? <laughs> you know def- you do. It was definitely a shocker. That's my number one. Maybe my favorite Rumble match of all time would have to be 92. I agree. But look at it, look at it, look at it. The Bobby Heenan Lex Luger debut segment. Rashenda, I will send you the link because I'm sure you have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. Maybe I'll Please do. Maybe. We'll see. But yeah, there it is. That You know, it's it's been a hell of a top three, Michael. Jesus Christ. It's been a hell of a top It's time for my number one. It is. How follow that? Follow I don't, that. I don't know if I can you follow that. Like. I don't know if I can follow that. That's rough. I don't think he wants you. <laughs> My favorite, and this is gonna. Oh God, you're like you're prepared too. Mark. No, this it's gonna sound a little silly, but especially looking at it now, but what it set up and what it was for me as a kid, it was like one of those first moments where I was like, "Whoa!" I know what you're gonna say. Can I say, "Can I guess the year?" Yep. Ninety. Yep. Oh, what? <laughs> too sweet, me. Yeah. I know what it is. Yep. God, I'm a loser. This is I, I'm from such a loser. the Royal Rumble, 1990. This was back when the Royal Rumble meant nothing. Basically, it was just a battle royal. It didn't get you a ticket to WrestleMania to fight for the title. Um, it, 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 this is back when the Royal Rumble really didn't have title matches on it. It was just a complimentary pay-per-view. Um, yeah. My number one moment was when there's two people left in the middle of the ring. And this is in the middle of the match. This is in the end of the match. It's when you had Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior. Standing there face to face for the first time ever. That is the first memory I ever have in, as a kid in wrestling of two baby faces. Feuding, yeah, ever. And I've see, never seen that before. The ring gets cleared and by it both blew guys. My fucking mind. The ring gets cleared by both guys, and then it's just those two. And this is in the middle of the rumble. There's still maybe ten guys left to come out, and they stand there and they go face to face. They crisscross. They do their little thing. Yeah. And crisscross that, applesauce. Yeah. That was like the whole thing they it always was, did. Yeah, they, uh... it was. It was, but it was that. <laughs> it was that. Oh my God! Moment yeah. of these two baby faces that are invincible, going at each other. Now looking back on it, you it's can silly. see. You can yeah. see it coming too. Yeah. Like even in the promos, yeah. they're going to build up to that. But yeah, it that, was. It, it's silly looking back at it now, just because of the character. And in '90, but, you just didn't do that. But I that was, was unheard of. I was three at the time, and I think I didn't really sink into. Is I this your it first wrestling on. memory? Watching this might have been one of my. This might have been my first wrestling memory. I was three years old. There you go. Watching. Oh, wow. You have a good memory. Well, so, you, you did beat Lex Luger in my so, pick, so the way to go. That was my first wrestling memory, and it's my number one rumble moment of all time. 
Nostalgia. Good, good. Good, good choice. Thank you. Well, there you have it. Leading up to WrestleMania 6. Uh, but but before, yeah, and it led up to WrestleMania 6 with that title match. First time you ever saw Hulk Hogan lose clean yep. to anybody. Yep. Um, he lost to the Ultimate Warrior at the Sky Dome in Toronto. In Canada, yes, okay. Amar Johnson, yeah. Maybe he was there as well. <laughs> but, um, Edge and Christian were in the crowd as kids, yes, as teenagers. they were there ringside. They were. They got ringside seats. you imagine having ringside seats to a WrestleMania? Yeah. That's... Holy <laughs> fuck. You know how Buy much a used it... car. They said their mom, like, scraped up the money somehow. Yeah. So I don't know how, how your mom would be able to scrape up that kind of money today. You know how much that would probably cost today? Yeah. Probably like deep. 10 grand. Speaking of scraping by, we got through the show. It's been a beast of an episode. Thank you but, so much. Before we go to that, guys, oh, let us know what are your favorite Royal Rumble moments? Whether it's your top three, favorite one of all time, top two, top ten, whatever. Let us know down in the comment section below. We haven't done that all show. Well, we just did it. We like to be interactive with you guys. I'm very, very happy with the comments we got in the last episode. I want to keep those going. Well, the proof's in the pudding right now. The feedback yes. are guests. So. I, I, I would love to hear your views your favorite Rumble moments of all time, or just let us know what you thought of the show in general down in the comment section below. Make sure you always hit that like subscribe button because we always. at Hibiki TMD, we love to interact because Travis, we are what? The most interactive pro wrestling podcast on the internet by far. I took your... I know. I, I, I switched it around. Yeah, that was weird. That's the first time we ever did that. Let's never do that again. Okay. I, I, it didn't feel right. <laughs> all right. Your thing. Well, I wanted to know what it felt like to be on that side of it. All serious to the Michael. It's been a pleasure to have Rashenda on. Been been a great guest. Uh, thank you so much, Rashenda, once again for being a listener, coming on the show, um, and dealing with this guy for an hour and a half, however long we're on. <laughs> You're a trooper by far. Rashenda, you got stuff to work on. Real will you be serious? Real quick. I got what? You got stuff to work on. I do. I you do. Need to work on your Keep knowledge. You. Maybe we yeah. can get you and Mel on when you come back, maybe in the future. Hopefully oh, we'd love to have team, you back more. Tag team match. There you go. Uh, since yeah, you I gotta. Hey, I find well, I finally got her into watching Independence now, so it's a start. Oh boy, she's gonna find another crush here soon on the Indies. Uh oh, so roll over. I think, I think she already found one. The, the I think she already window. found one. <laughs> she's oh, gonna, she already found one. What a shock! <laughs> yeah, she's gonna get into Kenny Omega. <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, Kenny Omega. Rashenda, real quick, one more time. Where can everyone check you out on Twitter? Uh, uh Metal Girl Twenty Nine. And that's not spelled like your normal Metal Girl. It's like MTL. Yeah, it's actually M E T A L G R L and twenty nine. Oh, the girl spelled. Okay, there you go. There's no. Yeah, I the girl is G R L. Yeah, there's no I in there. I'm it's too like cool metal for that. Metal girl, gotcha. Metal girl, solid. Yeah. yeah. So thank you once again yeah. for coming on, Michael. Forty episodes, man. What can I say? What's left to say? Howdy. Follow me on Twitter. Yeah, Howdy. See, that's my urban reference. You like that? You like I snuck mine in. Howdy is Yeah, Howdy's bitch. Follow me on Twitter at the Big TMD. Follow Mike at Mike the Slam Pig. Yeah. Stick around next I, week. That's what the, the dinging on my phone was. I had another new follower on Twitter. Oh, there you have it. Yes. Next week we'll be right back to your Slam Pigs podcast, Michael. Till then, I'm signing off. Michael, take this thing. Guys, till next time. Boy, fucking boy. He's not bad. Hey, you dirty fucking pigs. Mike here from the Slam Pigs Podcast, reminding you once again to check us out on Twitter, whether it be the Slam Pigs Podcast, whether it be me at Mike the Slam Pig, or whether it be our sister show, The Reset Button. Check us out. Also, you can find us on Facebook at the Slam Pigs Podcast or The Reset Button. And as always, Make sure you check us out as a whole on Hibiki TMD. Until we see you next time, boink, boink.